dans ma <laughs> Welcome everybody. It is episode 64. 64. Tiananmen Square the anniversary. Yeah, kind isn't of that... ironic. Should have been yeah. last episode. Eh? Sure. Anyway, it is episode 64. We have an important one for you. Welcome back. And I hope you're happy that we're having it on Fridays now. This is by popular demand. So we've decided to move the podcast to Fridays. You voted. We listened. We didn't have a vote. But a lot of so, so many people said, hey, why can't we just chill out on Fridays and have the podcast? And we're like, all right, cool. Yeah, we moved our schedule around. Let us know if you uh, approve or not in the comments of the video later on. Anyway, it's time for us to get started. We're going to go right into what's new. And of course, what's news where we talk about what's new, specifically with regards to China. And we've got another song for you this time, guys. Yeah, yeah. We, we figured we'd take a break from the rap. We'd do some ballads. Yeah, let's do a ballad. Uh, now, to set it up real quick. The 100th anniversary of the... Com We're getting amped up for the 100th anniversary of the Communist Party of China. Yes. Um, now, you guys might think, that's weird. Didn't they start in 1949? That's when they gained power. Yes. But the actual party was founded in 1921. So sure. we're getting super hyped for the celebration of the CCP, mm -hmm. uh, as they are now calling it the CPC. Now, that's something we have to point out here. It's a dog whistle. It's a dog whistle. Now you're going to see, we pointed this out, I pointed this out in my videos, you're going to start seeing this push from the Chinese government to call itself the CPC, the Communist Party of China. Yes, right? not the Chinese Communist Party. Chinese Communist Party, which has always been referred to, even yes. they've even referred to themselves as that Absolutely. for a period of time. Mm -hmm. So they're not saying it's racist or discriminatory to call it the CCP. Yeah, because now it's just like a Communist Party, that, it, but it's a Chinese version of a Communist right. Party. Now, the, the reason they're doing that is to sow um, misinformation, really. Sure. They're trying to confuse people. And then people that are too scared because of identity politics, they're too scared to talk about it. Sure. Right? So now you'll start seeing the word CPC instead of CCP. We'll continue to say CCP. Oh, it's CCP all day long right uh, here on ADV Podcast. Yes. Now they're getting ready for the 100-year anniversary. Mm -hmm. Very big deal for them. They're trying to make sure there's no dissent. And that's why you're seeing such harsh protest crackdowns like on the one that I covered today in my video. Yeah. Now, long story short, there is a huge push for propaganda for the 100th year anniversary, mm. which we will see in this video. Yes, okay, so we're going to switch you over to a video, and we're going to break it down a bit, but first we're just going to... We'll play half we'll of play it We'll play half of it so you can see what's going on. Because it doubles here. up. Yeah. Now we can break it down for the second round. Yeah. Um, okay. First of all, this is put on by the Hubei uh, Minzu Dashui, which means like the Nationalities University. Yeah. And what they did was there there was kind of this... It's even more like minorities. Minorities. Minorities, minorities yeah. University. Yeah. Um, so basically, the Chinese government put out this thing to people to celebrate the 100th year anniversary. You can see in the corner, top, yeah. top right-hand corner, it says the 100th year anniversary, a little hammer and sickle, mm -hmm. um, to make you know things that promote the party. Usually, Winston, I'll ask you, what is the what is the kind of vibe that they, they do when they promote? It's kind of like, this is why we're good, right? Sure. Whereas this is more like, China is not only the CCP, yeah. but that is the only reason yeah, that the China CPC, is good. It's the CPC or the CCP that makes China great. So in other words, China would pretty much suck without the CPC or the CCP. That's the message here. Right. You know I, mean, I mean, that's that's just literally going against any sort of nuance that you would want to say. Like, let's say China's good and then the CCP makes it better, right? Yeah. No, this is... China's good because of the Communist Party sure. of China, right? Again, I just have to point out that um, this this is one of those things that's happened because there's a big push leading up to the 100th, uh, 100th anniversary of the Chinese Communist Party. Mm -hmm. They've gone out and basically asked universities and other places to go and make sort of patriotic, yes. uh, celebratory uh, things. This is one of those coming out of one of the universities. There's tons of this stuff online. It's all over the place. China basically giving itself a blowy, you know. It's what or it is, yeah. It's, I should say that the, the Chinese Communist Party giving yeah. itself a blowy. And this is just one of those things. Um, but yes, again, all we can see here are the very cheap Taobao costumes <laughs> on these ethnic ethnic minorities, which, I mean, guys, you know, having traveled uh, around China a lot, like we have, 
Um, you go into all the different little towns and stuff, and you very often see them cosplaying as themselves. It's a weird kind of a situation because it's not natural that people be walking around in these kind of Taobao costumes. When you see people wearing authentic costumes, you can see they're handmade, they're sewn, yes. they're very good. But you can see the fabrics here. Oh, it's yeah. just that shiny, cheap, like polyester stuff that they just... It's Han cosplay. Out. Han people like to cosplay in these minority regions. Yeah. It's, who's anyway. to say that these guys aren't? These guys That's true. are Could minorities, be. probably, but it just it cheapens it when they put on these fake. Yeah. Like, have a little bit of pride. Get your grandma to, like, you know, sure. sew it like it was done in the old days or something. Well, the, nothing's as quality like the CCP. Next, absolutely. Uh, so anyway. we'd like to break down a couple of the lines here. Now, first of all, a little little tidbit of history for you guys. Mm. This is not an original song. This is a famous communist anthem called Meio Gong Chan Dan, Jomeo Xin Zhong Guo. Yes. So that means like there, without the Communist Party, there wouldn't be a new China. There wouldn't be a new China. And the, what is the new China? You can explain. The new China is the the current China that's yeah, run post 49. by yeah post forty nine, the, the one that Mao Zedong started, and it's the one where everyone died of famine, and mm. it's the one where the Tiananmen Square massacre happened, and it's the one that's currently run by an authoritarian government. Mm -hmm. I mean, sure, there are a lot of good things I could say that the Chinese Communist Party has done for China. When I say good things, it just means they've actually done some things to help progress. It doesn't mean they're good, though, because any system of government would have been able to achieve the same thing. Yeah. Because the people of China are very industrious and very hardworking, and they're very, they can chur ku, which means they can yes. deal with a hard situation. So, again, it's the Chinese people that actually created any kind of goodness or any kind of progress in China. But the... Communist Party, of course, takes complete credit for everything. One might say that mm. the lyrics should be changed to, it is the Chinese people that make China great. Yes. In fact, that is exactly what makes China great, are the Chinese people and not this terrible government who just cannot deal with any kind of criticism. It's kind of a funny thing. I almost said CPC, by the way. No. Seriously, if you hear anyone say CPC, that is a dog whistle that mm. they are shills for China. Now, yeah. what I wanted to say is this is the, the great ultimate irony. Mm -hmm. I think a lot of people sent, sent us this thinking like, holy shit, you guys got to cover this. Now, I told you the tidbit how it's an actual Ch communist song called yes. No Communist Party of China, then there would be no new China. Sure. What if I did you one better and told you that actually that song is a copy of a Guomindang song? From the KMT. Yeah. Actually, those, yeah, what the original is the song is, is the KMT was the Nationalist Party that yes. currently, uh, that, that ran away to Taiwan after yeah, they lost exactly. the Civil War. So it's War. basically the, the old Taiwanese government. Yes, mm. correct. Or the old Chinese government, yeah, right? The, old Chinese the government. one that China really refuses to acknowledge because sure. they said that the CCP is literally the, the, what made China good, right? Yeah. So the original song is actually, and it's the same tune and everything, it's... Mm -hmm. 没有国民党,就没有新中国. Right. It's actually, without the Nationalist Party of China, there would be no new China. So mm. Mao's China copied that song, changed it to 没有共产党, no Communist Party of China, there's no new China. And then these kids took that, riffed off that, and said, without the Chinese Communist Party, there would uh, that's what makes China great. Yeah, and one might say that the new China is completely built on copying others. Yeah, one might say that. For even instance, the song. communism, yeah. Marxism, yeah. Western style of government. Soviet yeah. copied mm. everything. Even the uniforms of the military. Yeah. All of that's all just Soviet copies. Uh, what, about yeah. that, what about that hammer and sickle? Is that Chinese? Hmm. Mm. Probably not. No. No, actually, definitely no, not. not. There's nothing mm. new in the land of China, one could say. The new yeah. China, I should say. Yeah, it's a shame. So Let's anyway. break down the lyrics. Okay, so is it is the CPC, the CCP that makes China great. We, we could refute that all day. Yeah, it's a repeat. Okay. They're showing like a um, timeline for all the listeners. Yeah, listeners at home. They're showing shots of all the nice cities, you know, and uh, so on, and, and showing you know, monuments. It, it, okay. <laughs> I gotta say, <laughs> if you're going to choose, this is, it says Tiananmen Guangchang, which means Tiananmen Square. In Beijing, it says yes. Beijing. Tiananmen Guangchang. Now, this is a video that's meant to show you how great China is and how the CPC makes China great. And they show the most miserable, <laughs> foggy slash smoggy slash not appealing footage of Beijing. What are they saying? This, this, this is the best they could do? This is what the CCP does for China. Apparently they make it gray. Well, that this is this is yeah makes China gray. That's actually more yeah that's actually way more accurate. This but, is I mean, the worst. This. It's when the humidity and fog mixes with the smog and it hangs in the air like <laughs> a poison. Bad. It's 
very bad. But seriously, they couldn't have gotten a better shot. No, apparently not. I mean, I've got better shots of uh, So do I. Yeah, I've got worse shots too. It's, yes. I got both, but yeah. I only have nice shots, okay, unfortunately. Yeah, yeah, you, I went well, there and it was really beautiful. Yeah, it was yeah. super. That time that we went there and it was so good, I was like, this is not representative. I, don't worry, I don't fall for it. It's My like if a, there. if a restaurant had a celebrity chef come in for one night. One night, and, and then you, that's their whole yeah, menu. But, yeah. and then, but you ate that one night, and you're like, that's the that's best the restaurant best, in the world. It's, it's actually Pizza Hut. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> anyway. Anyway, let's get to the Pause it right there. Yeah. Now this is an interesting thing. I thought this was kind of funny. If they were going to do this in English, which they did, mm. they probably should have not used the phrase Chinese men because we know China is a very chauvinist society, right? Yeah. You guys can think whatever you want about feminism or whatever. Mm, this yeah, is women not hold up half the sky. Yeah. And all that. At the end of the day, China is very much not a, uh, an equal playing field for women. No. Would you agree? I 100% agree with you, yeah. Speak to any Chinese woman. She can be the most nationalist person in the world, but she will admit in conversation that it's pretty unfair to be a woman in China. They definitely rule the roast at, home, uh, roost, rule the roost at sure. home. That's a different story when you're married and in, yes. in a marriage. They, Spousal abuse is also massive, though. Yeah, the women beat the husbands. No, it's, it's I, both. I know, I know. It's I'm both. just joking. Yeah. Anyway, no, quite seriously, though, uh, it is it is unfair for women in the workplace. There's a lot of discrimination. You can watch, you can actually watch my video about how I was the, the bodyguard for a Chinese serial rapist, just to kind yeah. of get an idea of what some oh, We're going to do a whole segment on, coming up when uh, the, the artwork yeah, is yeah, finished. Yeah, exactly. Anyway, um, it says CPC fights for Chinese men. Now, this is probably just a bad translation of yes, Zhong Guo that's, Ren. That's actually what I wanted to say, is yeah. that... In when my students would often say this, instead mm. of saying people, they would say men because it's kind of like an old English thing, right? Mm -hmm. Like all, for all men, right? Yeah. You know what I mean? It's I guess, not actually yeah. nan ren. Yeah. You know what I mean? Anyway. Yeah, but yeah, so it's Zhongguo ren means Chinese people, yes. but I guess they just say Chinese men. It's just a, sure. a bad translation. Okay, let's see. Okay. Um, yeah, <laughs> I mean that's yeah, sure. With this, a tank, I, <laughs> you, you jumped on that one before me. What I want yeah. to say is this scene. You'll see this often. They'll do this in universities or in mm. school. It looks like I'm flexing there. Yeah. Let me put my arm down here. I yeah. don't need to see my massive gains. <laughs> um, anyway, I'm joking. Yeah. If you you'll see the kids, they do this thing like this. Um, it's not like a salute. It's kind of like a salute, right? Yeah, and they do this in front salute. of the communist flag. Like they'll mm -hmm. have the going to uh, the what do you say going to communist party flag. Yes. Yeah. When they when the flag ra raising cer uh, ceremonies and they'll they'll raise their hands like this. Yeah. Um, but to relieve people's pain, mm -hmm. I yeah. mean, they're no Tylenol. I'll tell you that. <laughs> yeah, that's for sure. They they cause a great deal of pain actually, and they have caused a great deal of pain to the Chinese people. But right now. After the, the success of opening up to the Western world and allowing a Western investment and becoming the world's factory, we've seen a huge um, increase in, in quality of life for the average person in China, which is correct. But of course, they jump on that and say, that's us. That's all us. Yeah. Like, yeah. We did that. We, we claim this. And, and we relieve the pain of the people in China. No, you put them in that position in the first place. You're the ones that closed off and did not want to engage with the Western world. You're the ones that did all this ridiculous crap throughout the, the Cultural Revolution and the Great Leap Backwards and all that stuff. And it was only after opening up to the West that things started to improve. So, you know, take if you're going to try and take credit for like relieving their pain, take credit for also causing a lot of pain because you did more damage than good. It's it's this whole theory of uh, the way that China Chinese Communist Party operates mm. and how what they do is they allow and then take credit. It's all about, uh, we allow the people this, and then we'll take credit for allowing you this. Yeah. It's stuff that, be freedoms that people should already have. They allow it, and then they say, oh, we gave you this opportunity. Sure. I mean, let's point out a couple of things. This is a classroom. There are yeah. three cameras in the corner there. Mm -hmm. All right. One of them is a CCTV camera. So the other two, I think, are probably video conferencing related. Mm. So, you know, probably not there to like spy on the students, but the one in the top corner is to spy mm -hmm. on the students. And this is something that's been going on for a very long time in China, way before this whole surveillance state yeah. thing happens. You know, when I used to teach at kindergarten, so this is 2007, around about, but, you know, yeah, it was, would have been late 2006, early 2007 that I did my kindergarten stint. There were cameras and microphones in the classrooms. 
Now, this was really frustrating as a teacher there. Um, and the other people that worked with me agreed we all had a thing. I actually ended up uh, hacking the system and, and shutting it down for a time because it was so annoying. But we'd get called into the principal's office. And I got called in one time. And she showed me playback of the video because what would happen is it would stream. That it was very rudimentary, but the parents would watch all day at home, watch you teaching the kids. And one of the teachers, I mean, one of the, the parents had like marked down exactly how many times I'd called up each child to do like a demonstration in front of the class. And she's like, he called up the other children like 1.3% times more than my child. And I got scolded for this. So they, the whole day they're watching and they're listening to the classes. It was very unnerving to work under that kind of situation. But, of course, we have cameras in the classrooms for many reasons these days. And probably the number one reason is to keep an eye on the students and make sure that they're not doing anything that could go against the party. Yes, and you know? actually, another thing you can point out, in a classroom like this where you'd be in a university, mm. uh, when I used, I used to predominantly teach university, and what happens is there is one or two students in the class that report to the party head in the university. So every university has a party head. Yeah, yeah. I spoke in the party about, room. Yeah, in the yeah. party room to the <laughs> least so fun horse. party you've ever... <laughs> you don't want to go to that party. So, yeah, yeah the students basically, they would, they would report on what I'm teaching and make mm. sure that I'm not saying anything out of turn because yeah. if i say anything that's critical of the chinese communist party what the students will do is go and, and rat me out so you always have to be careful like you can have the greatest rapport with my students and i still talk to a lot of them today and yeah. believe it or not a lot of them are not sympathetic towards the chinese government but sure. they're very secret about it but anyway of course they have uh one of my students actually rat ratted out the person that was in charge of doing that to right. me a few months ago and i was talking to them but they, they're in there and they're, they're not nefarious or anything but there are people that have kind of ro risen through the ranks like mm -hmm. since elementary school basically and they get this party position where they go and they're responsible for ratting people out like yeah. teachers well i mean if you any if any of you watched my video that i put out yesterday mm -hmm. um in the Fudan University in Shanghai, uh, a university professor, math teacher, just murdered one of those Communist Party yeah. secretaries. And that's that's what they do. Those Communist Party secretaries, mm. they have their office mm -hmm. in the university, and all they are there for is to make sure that everyone's loyal to the party. And they recruit students. Each class has a student, mm -hmm. so-called minder or more, who sit there and take notes during class. And they notice if anyone's like maybe talking about the Hong Kong protests or talking yep. about anything, they report them to that uh, Communist Party secretary. And then they get disciplined or checked out or investigated, that kind of thing. So it's, it's kind of a shitty situation. But for those of you at home, we've got a bunch of students standing in front of a, a projection of communist um, rhetoric, which they're all sort of saluting. And this is something that happens every day. Right. Are we going to move on? Oath. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah. She had the okay. She helped people win their, to win their rights. So the, apparently the Communist Party of China, or the Chinese Communist Party, um, is a woman um, and managed to help people win their rights. Yeah, well, you know how they have to, in propaganda in China, what they do is they say what they don't do. Yes, so, Every single time, yeah. just like in the 12 core socialist values, democracy is one of democracy them. Democracy and freedom. Yeah. That's a core socialist value that you'll see in China. Yeah, that they write on the billboards yeah. and stuff. Yeah. Anyway, what, what do we have after that? She brought to China hope and bright light. Fair enough. Why is this in English, by the way? So this is the creepy thing. I'm glad you asked that. Mm. This is normally something that would be only for a domestic audience, okay? Right. This would only be for a domestic audience because the rest of the world would cringe out of it. I mean, I feel like mo the most of you that are watching right now live yeah. are watching this saying, what is the intention of this? Sure. This is not going to, this will fall on deaf ears in mm -hmm. the West. And in fact, it does. The problem is, is that China has gone so far under Xi Jinping that the, the propaganda has gotten simultaneously more clever and also just more. Yes. So you see this kind of scattershot stuff. This mm. is meant for your eyes and ears, and it's hilariously tone deaf. Like, nobody's yeah. going to latch onto this other than yeah. to make fun of it. Yeah. But it's funny how much they're putting out. Absolutely. So what do we have after this? She fought the anti-Japanese war. Okay, now hang on a second here. Well, she I, didn't. No, she didn't. This... She fought in anti-Japanese war. I mean, I guess technically well, that's te correct. They, they did help in, in like one battle or something. Yeah, I wish I had the stats up here. Yeah, this is a, this is a huge lie that the CCP puts out to the, the entire populace every day, all day. They mm -hmm. have those shows on TV which show this basically the Communist Party of China, like these band of rebels, like killing all the Japanese invaders during the Sino-Japanese War. 
and it's if you ever watch one of these programs, you you will first of all think that the audience watching this must be brain dead because it's so like hilariously blown out of proportion and and factually inaccurate. But you also think that whoever's making these things are the most immoral pieces of shit ever. They're hate mongers. They want hatred to continue. But the fact that they misrepresent what the Chinese Communist Party did during that time is the biggest, you know, problem with it. And everyone now, you speak to any old uncle on the road or whatever, and he'll be like, yes, the Gong Chandan beat the Japanese. They did nothing. It has nothing to do with the fact that the U.S. dropped two nukes on Japan. Yeah, I mean... Not not only that. That's not acknowledged, the, though. Yeah, all the actual battles that were fought were not the CCP. No, it was the the, the KMT. Yes. You know, like the, the nationalists. Yeah, the nationalists who fled to Taiwan, and they got so decimated during the fight, it was very easy for the Communist Party to come in and take over when the dust settled. Chairman Mao basically hid out, mm. and there were there were valiant efforts from certain communists in sure. in these battles, but by and large, the Communist Party waited. And then his strategy, he thanked Japan. Yeah. Chairman Mao thanked Japan because it made it easy for him to come to power. Yeah. They mowed down the nationalist soldiers, and then the communists said, you know what, this is an easy time, it's a power vacuum, let's yeah. pop in. That's that's why we have China where it is today. Yeah, so I mean, it's it's just see how they're like pushing that. They're mm -hmm. still pushing that. And I think a lot of people who are a little um, naive about the whole China thing and how it'll work, so they'd probably like read that and be like, oh, oh yeah, 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 that's probably what Fair happened. Fair enough. Okay, so it so says she fought in the anti-Japanese war. Anti Improved people's lives and more. Again, it's this allowance thing. We allow you to improve your lives. Yeah. Why is that huge clock on the wall? <laughs> so it's, it looks like a friggin', like a like a show, like bring me the suitcase by. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> so you got like the commas flag. I, I'm also a little confused because the way the desks are arranged, the, the project, I mean the display screen it's behind is behind them. them. Why? Yeah, maybe they just did it for the shot. Anyway. Uh, okay. <laughs> the show is high tech. <laughs> She made China the land of the free. Now this, don't don't just copy the American mm. anthem, yeah. guys. Yeah, it's not the land of the free. That's nonsense. Well, yeah, obviously okay. we don't need to no. just dispute That's that. Just, you don't uh, have freedom of uh, anything, really. Yeah, you. It seems actually like life can seem very free when you're just kind of living there until it's not. Yes, and that's the illusion that the communist party is very good at providing everyone. Everyone's like, I just do what I want. I can live the life I look want. Look at look at my perfect example is my video today. Look at the mass protests right now in yeah. mainland China. By the way, this is happening. Yeah, the students thought they could protest because of their degree designation. Sure. Long story short, they. The Chinese government made this legal change to make it seem like they're going to get a blue collar degree instead of a bachelor's degree after they finish grad after they graduate. Yeah. So the students go out there and they're like, "That's bullshit," and they go and protest. What happens? SWAT team comes in, arrests, beats, threatens their family, threatens death, and all these kids. And the kids are shocked because we were watching the footage, and both Winston and I were like, "You know what? These kids all in their mind think that they're living in a free country." Yeah. And then now they just had a very very big wake up call. That's right, and that's how it works. The unfortunate thing is it's the same. I'm not going to say they were, but I'm pretty sure that these same kids were probably saying that oh, yeah. the Hong Kong protesters yes. were cockroaches yep. and, and all that kind of thing, because that was the, the main thing to do. Because it's very easy to go and criticize other people and yes. what other people do until you're in the same position. Right. Um, and I found this with a lot of expats that live in China as well. You know, being the first original China vlogger, um, I've received a lot of hate from mm -hmm. expats because they're like, oh yeah, you say it's not cool to smoke weed in China, smoke, smoke weed every day, that kind of thing. I'm like, dude, it's against the law. You shouldn't be doing it. And then that, Didn't say same, it was impossible. that <laughs> same person, and mm. this has happened multiple times, will be sending me frantic messages. Dude, I've just been arrested. They've just raided the bar and they've taken, they're taking urine samples. What can I do? Same people. And then... I don't hear from them for like two, three weeks, and then they're deported, deported and on the plane yeah. saying, like, like I, I wish, wish I'd, I'd listened to you. Yeah, this is how it works because it seems so free and easy in China. People walk around drunk and do what they want, say what they want, everything, especially foreigners, Chinese people to a much lesser degree. But then when the book gets thrown at them, they realize, wait a second, I actually don't have any rights. It's not like America where I can refuse a, a search. You know, or I can demand a warrant or something. Or just for them talk to, about whatever yeah, you like. exactly. Or they get a knock on the door because they made a, a post online or something. This happens a lot. And so it's that illusion of freedom that actually placates a lot of people. It does, truly. And it's it's all about official discretion in China. So the officials, like the police or whatever, they can decide whether or not they're going to yep. go ahead. So they can watch you breaking the law in front of them and they'll be like, yeah, eh, it's fine. It's too much hassle. 
But if there's a, a reason for them to care, then suddenly you get the book thrown at you. Or to be accused of something you didn't even do yeah. to be made an example Absolutely. of. Absolutely. Look, look at the Michaels yeah. from Canada that got nailed. I know that's an overused example, but it happens way more than you think it does. Yeah, it's, it's happened a lot. Anyway, let's continue. She made China land of the free, apparently. The free people are Again. People of all ranks had their say. Again, saying what's not true. Yes. You have to say it. Yeah. You can't. Like, it doesn't matter who you are. You cannot just simply criticize the government in no. China. You can be, and it, when they say all ranks, you have to understand there's a huge disparity between people that have money and people that don't have money yep. in China. One okay. of the biggest in the yeah. world. So I want to end this with me being shocked because when I was in China, mm -hmm. I would say, and not not right before I left, before I left, it started getting really bad. But in my heyday of yeah. university, One there we go. All okay, right. sorry, continue. Mm -hmm. I would never. I would be shocked to the core if any of my students did this. Sure, they number one wouldn't give a shit enough to do something like this. It's, mm. it's outlandish. It would be considered very cringe, right? Yeah. Yes, they're proud to be Chinese. Yes, sure. they were nationalistic, but they were not to this extent, not even close. Yeah. And the fact that with a straight face in 2021 that kids are doing this now shows you the level of Xi Jinping's China. He's gone back. Mm. I'm talking about backtracking to Mao era propaganda. That's where we are now. Sure. This is not considered that. It is still considered cringe amongst a huge subset of Chinese people, yeah. but it's much less cringe than when I was there. And that's worrying. Yeah. You know, I actually had a conversation the other day with a Chinese friend of mine and it's, um, it's our generation yeah. of Chinese people that, that got to see the positive change. Yes. So, you know, it's a weird thing before our generation. So we can say the last generation, yeah. the IE generation, the, the, the older people. The, yeah. The older people sort of in their fifties, sixties, you know, that type of people, they were part of the red guard. They went mm -hmm. through some horrible things. They're, they're very uneducated in, in general. Because of the, yes. the turmoil and all that and, kind of and, stuff. And Chairman Mao made education a bad sure. thing. They're a nasty bunch. Not all of them. There's a lot of decent, honest, yeah, yeah, sure. good people as well. But there's a lot of nasty people from that time because they were red guards and all that sort of thing, you know. Then you have the, the, the people of our age, a little bit older, a little bit, you know, so sort of anyone that's kind of in their late 30s to early, I mean, I'd say late 40s, thereabouts, in, about, in around there. Those are the people that saw China open up during the 80s. You know, they sort of grew up in the late 70s, early 80s. And they saw um, opening up to the West how, how positive that was. They saw that these are the people that went to Tiananmen Square and wanted democracy and wanted freedom, you know, that sort of thing. These are the people that were able to see the stark differences between the bad old days of communist China and the good when China started to open up. Yep. These are the people that you can have a reasonable, good conversation yep. Yep. with. The people that aren't just like brainwashed into yeah. China great, you know? Right. Unfortunately, though, the offspring Newest, of our yeah. generation, yes. they've been born into a different kind of China where they have never seen, they haven't seen the bad of China. Like the, the yeah. bad bad. Yeah, the exactly. Bad, Especially yeah. if they come from a middle class yeah. family or something. They see wealth. They see, you know, good infrastructure around them. They see the stability. And they think it's always been that way because of the way China rewrites or the Chinese government rewrites history. They don't ever show people how bad it ever was. They can only ever show how good China was and how Mao Zedong was a hero that created all this wealth that you see now. So it's this younger generation of little pinks that have grown up now. So anyone that was born sort of in the 90s and onwards are really intolerable they're kind of these ultra nationalists not all of that, them obviously. of course not yeah. of course not but like you're seeing a shift again so it yeah. went from like yes. ultra nationalistic yeah. crazy you know mao following red book waving to reasonable yeah. good people back to kind of like oh china's just amazing it's so great everyone else is inferior you all suck 
You right. know, I drive a Ferrari and you have full to work circle. a full-time job. Yeah. Full circle. Yeah. And it's the newest generation that also is is very uh, slow to judge China as well. So, yeah. I mean, I think you, you made a good impression there when you said that they got to, our generation got to see China open up. And that is absolutely the last reasonable generation, by and large. Yeah. Our wives, the, all, all of their friends. Sure. They're normal people that got to see what the benefits of becoming an international player are. Yes. Now, the newest generation of people, yes, there are good there's good amongst them but there are i retract a little bit not not all of them i'm no, just no. saying you you're seeing like a huge amount it's of a huge resurgence of nationalism nationalist nonsense from this younger generation our our generation it was kind of embarrassing to be a nationalist yeah. in china it was pretty it was kind of like oh it's your country bumpkin if you're sure. kind of buying into this kind of yeah, stuff yeah exactly we're walking around in a communist party, yeah that's like, not cool right thing, yeah it's not cool anymore still but mm. it's not that embarrassing anymore no, and the problem is be proud of these, this generation that grew up and didn't see the bad, bad, what's happened is because of that, they've been placated, like you said. Yeah. So there is a lot of bad in modern China. I would argue it's much worse now than it was when we were there. Yeah. And the thing is, they, they've they been brought up in a scenario where they're not taught to see the bad anymore, yeah. right? So yes, they don't see famine, they're not taught about famine and stuff. And also, the current modern problems of, of having absolutely no freedom and absolutely no international dialogue, and absolutely no um, tolerance for other people, that's not something you consciously see like a starving person. Sure. So they're not even aware of the fallacies and problems that China currently has. Yeah. Right? So it's this fake utopia where even right in front of them, if they see something, a concept that doesn't agree with them, they mm. won't criticize it. On top of that, the, the Chinese government also placates people by always pointing outwards and saying, oh, yes. look, there's, yes. um, there's crime and violence in yes. America. So that means you should be grateful. Our method of government where we control absolutely every aspect of your life is good because you don't see violence here. Meanwhile, it's not true. There's tons no. of violence. There's tons of crimes yeah. in China. Yeah. But they have such a tight control over the media that they ensure that people don't get to see exactly how bad it is. Correct. And I just want to throw this out there. You know, my video yesterday, I spoke about these, these like this epidemic in China where you have people that are frustrated with society that go out and just mass murder people with knives. With knives, yeah. And they specifically target children. They stab children in kindergartens and in middle schools and things. And it's something you can look up. There's a long, Adults doing this. Yeah, adults. It's adults. There's a long history of this happening, and I made a, a prediction in my video that if I put that out, you'd get a, a lot of people saying, oh yeah, but America has gun violence. Guess what happened? Tons of people, <laughs> oh yeah, but America has gun violence. You see, this is how the Chinese government has conditioned people to not ever be able to criticize anything no. wrong with China. So you don't, I did not see any anyone, like Chinese person, the, uh, these nationalist types say, yes, it's actually a very serious problem that we have in China. I know that America has a lot of problems with gun violence, etc. But yes, we need to address this. It's a mental health issue, whatever. No, yeah, no, no, not a single. Everyone's like, oh, yeah, what about Sandy Hook? The, the one example. Oh, yeah. What about all these other like school mass shootings. shootings and school shootings where it's usually a, a peer on peer thing? You know, no, I'm talking about adult men going into kindergartens and killing innocent little children. And it's something that happens a lot in China. It's this. That's what they've been taught to never Look inwards, never look at a problem mm. and actually say it's a problem. If there's a problem in China, it's okay because there's more of a problem somewhere else. Yep. And that's what they do. They deflect. So it's like, oh, yeah, whatever. We'll actually defend our problems. We actually like our problems. We'll keep allowing it to mm -hmm. happen simply because we can say America has problems. And that is completely by design. Because yeah. what keeps the Chinese Communist Party in power? Mm. That very same apathy yeah. or that same deflectionism. If we can say, if we can convince our populace that it's always worse elsewhere and they yeah. don't have any option to see it, because think about it, they block them off mm. so that they can't have a meaningful dialogue and then they let some nationalists trickle out to go have a, a very virulent voice and go yell and scream and stuff. Yeah. Then at the end of the day, what they're doing is they've created this kind of nanny state where like everything outside of China is bad and worse. And this, so they're not going to criticize internal politics. No, no. Right? So there will, there will be no change. No, absolutely not. Anyway, anyway um, yeah, we thought that was interesting to break down. Yeah. So thank you for pu putting up with this, uh, this music. Yeah, Sorry, it's not a cotton it. wrap, but um, you know, don't yeah. worry about that stuff. We still got that. Sure. What do we got going on here? Oh, this is just the university. I just oh, the, oh, this, this is the university. The, the, this the, is the Hubei Minzu yeah. Dashue, which mm -hmm. is the, the minority university. university. Just, of course, he got the communist uh, hammer and sickles of right on the I, I want to ask usual. you, what, what's the deal with having a minority university anyway? So 
There's 56 re recognized ethnic minorities in China. So mm -hmm. you, you can think of people like the Uyghurs or the Mongolians or the Miao people, right? Yeah. And then at the same time, you're going to make me talk about this very serious thing over this. Yes, I am. Uh, <laughs> Go for it. Um, yeah, so, they're a minority. Yes. So there is <laughs> uh, there are special universities set up to represent that, right? So they'll they'll get certain admission status or a discount or lower scores on tests and stuff to allow yeah. them. In. And it's it's a facade that like these so that these minorities are well taken care of. It's kind of like when they call uh, Xinjiang or Guangxi or Inner Mongolia an autonomous province. Yeah, but it's what not that ready. means is it's less autonomous than a normal Han province, <laughs> yeah, right? Exactly. It's just these labels they throw out there. I got you. Anyway, Shamate. Yeah, we remember um, that from last week, right? You can play everyone? this. This is just callback stuff, but we wanted to shout out the person on our subreddit, uh, yeah. reddit.com slash r slash ADV yeah. China. If you're not a part of the subreddit, go join us. It's actually Definitely. a lot of fun. Uh, this was amazing because he actually made this during the show. Yes, during the so show. so quick. This came up while we were still talking about it. I actually wanted to shout out Xi Jinping for joining the Shamate to revolution absolutely um looking great yeah. with the shamata so we got a couple look. we got a couple new clips these are you. the old ones just yeah. for some callback if you guys didn't watch the last episode this is a subculture in china where factory workers that move outside their hometown they join this weird lost crew of bizarre hairstyles and this is one of their leaders yes um we just love his helmet hair his mm -hmm. lego hair look yeah um, and then some of his other cohorts, they, they tend to go with the colors. This guy likes to stick with the white face and the, <laughs> uh, yeah, and the, the helmet hair. Mm -hmm. so but we've got a, a couple, couple more yeah, clips? there's a couple new ones I wanted yeah. to throw in here. All right. I'll just so, let this play out. Everyone loves these. He's, this is still my favorite. Clip this is your this favorite one. one. Yeah. yeah. He goes full white face in this one. Yeah. <laughs> Actually, my second favorite. That's my second favorite, favorite, favorite is the one the where he stops one? the punch. Oh, yeah. that one's coming. Yeah. Good. He looks... He looks great. Yeah, <laughs> he just yeah. looks great. I just love it. That guy looks like a girlfriend he used to have. Oh, uh, does it? Yeah. The maybe, one with the purple hair. No, I, I mean, the, yeah, I guess this, yeah, this over here. Full white face there. <laughs> no the neck, case. though. He didn't paint his neck. Here's him doing. Yeah. Yes, looking good, my man. The filter kind of screwed up because it accentuated his nose. Yeah. And then sharpened his mouth. Now, let's pause this for a second. Mm -hmm. I want to get you guys ready. I th They've been pretty innocent thus far. Yeah. But this last new clip that I have, they just went full vulgar mode. Yeah. Let's see what he does. Sure. <laughs> Oh, yeah, absolutely. Now, you gotta love those guys. You gotta though. love the shamatas. Yeah, so the shamatas yeah. are there. Sh a little callback. <laughs> yes. Shamata. <laughs> oh, or hmm? kill Matt. Ooh. Oh, yeah, exactly. <laughs> oh, if anyway. you translate shamata, it actually means kill Matt. It does, doesn't it? So, is that That's it for our what's new? Uh, there might be more, but maybe not. Let Can't me remember. take a quick look. Oh, oh yeah. yeah, we wanted to shout out before you show Finally, us. Yeah, give uh, a congratulations. Okay, big congratulations. You know, we've had this challenge for people to find birds in China because, you mm -hmm. know, there are no birds in China. Um, wild birds, other yeah. than those, like, pigeons that they yeah. feed. Uh, or the occasional sparrow yeah, here Yeah, the occasional, there. obviously there are birds, of but, course. like, it's very difficult to find. But someone found definitive proof and put it on our, um, our uh, subreddit, to definitive proof of a wild bird in China. So we just wanted to show it to you here. Shout out, uh, massive big find. Yeah, and again, we were wrong. Irrefutable. We we apologize, and yeah. we'll think harder. There we next go. Time. It's um, I don't know what the breed is. Or... I don't know. I mean, I'm I'm pretty well versed in birds. I haven't seen this one myself, but I will say that we were wrong, and we'll think harder before we make claims like that next time. So thank yeah. you very much. Yeah, absolutely. All right, let's keep it's, going. Uh, it's fantastic. Anyway, yeah, let's there are some... no birds in China. No. Let's continue. <laughs> All right. So yeah, that is everything. And what what's new, right? So yeah. we're gonna have a couple of questions. All right, let's do yeah. that. Uh, Dark Sam 644 mm -hmm. says, when you guys lived in the PRC, that's People's Republic of China, were, your, uh, were you friends with any citizens, Chinese citizens who had been to Taiwan? And did they ever express in private conversation that they were envious of Taiwan as a free society? I can very easily say in the beginning, yes. I knew a couple of people that did tour group stuff in Taiwan and they were all envious of Taiwan. Yes. Um, now, no. Now Taiwan is just this separatist a-hole region that they all you, hate. You know, some something else which is kind of related um, is I knew a couple of people. And there's one that really stood out in my mind is 
uh, I went to this dinner with sort of kind of rich people in China. When I say rich, I'd say like just above upper class. Yeah. So, you know, they're fancy. They're showing off. Take me to a nice a nice place. And um, the, the woman who was in charge was actually flirting with me. She, she invited me to show off or whatever, you know. Um, she told me the story about how, how much she hates Japan, right? And they all hate Japan. Everyone was agreeing with with her, you know, because it's it's kind of it's in vogue always in China to hate Japan, of course, because yeah, of the yeah. atrocities in the past and stuff. But then she told me that she went to Japan recently and she changed her mind. And she was like, I can't believe how polite everyone is there. Um, you know, it's so clean. Everything is great. And it was just very eye opening for me. Because when you do grow up in China, and like I said, you've got those anti-Japanese things on the TV all the time. And of course, they also have like a lot of, they slander Taiwan a lot too. And like, oh, they're just little scoundrels. What do they like, call them like, what do they call them again? They call them like runaway bad children or something. They've got some special name because they don't want to like come back to the mainland yeah, or yeah, whatever. Something like that. But it was just very interesting to see that um, because you get brought up in the situation taught to hate so much, when you actually go and see with your own eyes... Uh, it changes your opinion. And I met a lot of people, a lot of my friends in China, actually, strangely enough, I used to hang out with a lot of Japanese people. So I met them and I could speak Japanese when I first got to China, but I couldn't speak Chinese. So I used to hang out with uh, Japanese people. And of course, the people that hang out with Japanese people, they're all translators, you know, the Chinese yeah. people, right? Or the, the hostesses that you get at all the little uh, restaurants, restaurants that come yeah. to pour your beer and stuff. They obviously learn Japanese because they have to. And all the people you talk to that actually have been to Japan and uh, have a lot of dealings with Japanese people, they changed their mind. They were like, it's actually a really oh, yeah. nice place. Yeah. It's great. They all want to move there and stuff. So it just shows you that sometimes you do need to see things with your own eyes, which is why I started my YouTube channel is when I went to China, I saw it was different to what I'd been hearing about. Yeah. Yeah. And I started to show everyone. And unfortunately, it just kind of went backwards and downwards from there. True. But yeah. Sorry, long answer. Uh, Tyler uh, Giver says the shills should be referred to as the Green Hat Brigade, and we agree. Oh, absolutely. You can look that up. Yeah, we've covered that a lot in our past videos, but to wear a green hat means you're being cheated on. Yeah. And it's some, some story that a wife used to um, make her husband wear a green hat or something, and it was a signal to her, yeah. her uh, lover or whatever. Yeah. Uh, mm. A little money goes towards Winston's Chuck E. Cheese Salt Pizza Fund. From Thank Square. you. Yes, I'm um, still recovering from that. Yeah, that was I a mean, while ago, but that was... Big, big hit to my wallet. Traumatizing. And I literally, for expensive. those of you who don't know, I literally, when I first came <laughs> to America, and I was drunk, and I wanted a pizza, and I'm like, this is America, I want a pizza. And I looked on uh, DoorDash, which is kind of like the app to order food, and I saw Chuck E. Cheese. I never heard of Chuck E. Cheese before, so I thought, it said pizza, Chuck E. Cheese. I'm like, okay, they got to have lots of cheese, because I love cheese on my pizza. <laughs> so, uh, like I said, I was actually quite drunk at the time, so I ordered a large pizza. Did they bring a ball pit? <laughs> <laughs> no, I didn't know what it was about. So I ordered a large pizza, but I checked every, you know, they say like, do you want to add pepper, yeah, add yeah, this, yeah. add that? I checked everything, like actually everything. Cause I was kind of drunk. I'm like, yeah, I'm going to try this out. And it was a $60 pizza. Okay. Which is outlandish. It's ridiculous. It's like you could buy a meal for your family for $60. All right. Yes. And it was only like this big anyway. It wasn't even that large. So this thing arrives and it's like, caked this high with trash yeah and it tasted just like salt i bet it had no other flavor i like, bet i i can finish almost anything when it comes to right. pizza but i just couldn't finish that no, i found myself salty. like scraping all the scraping it off till it was raw and washing it in under the sink under the tap <laughs> you know and then like eating some of it oh, i was really bad. oh that's yeah. one of my favorite winston stories and, oh. and again it's innocent but it's like when you don't know what chuck e cheese yeah. is but for me it's so solidified going to chuck e cheese when i'm a kid i'm like thinking of anamorphic like mice and like never heard of it. ball pits yeah it's an american only thing That's yeah the yeah thing. for sure yeah. uh one more chris heron uh greetings from scotland first time watching the podcast live want to show my support love the content awesome thank, thank you, you for joining us yeah yeah okay on. so it's now it's time for us to move on to uh soft power hour uh which is when we talk about some main segment we talk about how china is changing your mind through media <laughs> and underhanded ways and just out in the open ways and you name it they do it now this is kind of Leading up into our main segment here is what you're going to see in the background here. What is that? That is a C-17 mm, plane. Globe Master 3. Yeah, the Globe Master. Yeah, I'm pretty, pretty sure. cool name. Yeah. It's, it's like, cool. we will master the globe. Yeah. That's what the U.S. is saying. Yeah, it's, it's basically, <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's kind of a replacement to the C-130 Hercules and, um, you know, the flying boxcar before that and all you, that. It's, 
You it, have to explain these things. It's a military transport plane. And it's used to deliver troops and goods around the place. It's got a fairly long range. And so it's, uh, yeah, it's America's good little military transport plane. So I want to ask you a question. Yeah. Is that a, in America? No, it's not. Oh, interesting. Where, is, where is it? It's in Taiwan. Oh, interesting. I, I, Because I remember a certain country, I think it was called the People's Republic of China. Yeah. I believe that they said that the red line, the bottom line would be when the U.S. Air Force flies a plane into Taiwan. Yeah, then they would like rain hellfire down. Yeah, and they'll, go take over, and... they'll go to war and take over Taiwan. I believe that's what they said. Yes. yes. Oh, wait. Oh, here they are getting off the plane. These mm. are some U.S. senators. Mm -hmm. uh, they are here to do what? They were there to discuss donating, what, 750,000 uh, COVID vaccines? Yeah, to Taiwan. To Taiwan. Right. It's a yeah, diplomatic effort. You have to understand how, how tough it is. Taiwan, first of all, is the biggest success story to come out of the mm -hmm. initial COVID breakout. And it was due to luck, mostly, because China had put some kind of uh, embargo on Taiwan to because they always get pissed off. Oh, you made a phone call to America? Guess what? We're going to stop our tourists from coming there. Taiwan's like, oh, okay. what oh. a pity. <laughs> oh, that's a, Ooh, oh, what a, pity what a horrible thing. And that was just before the COVID outbreak. So, of course, Chinese people weren't allowed to fly to Taiwan because the Chinese government didn't allow them to fly to Taiwan. And so it saved Taiwan from the initial outbreak of COVID. And that's because infected Chinese citizens were flying across the entire globe at the same time that China would not allow infected Chinese people to travel locally within China. Okay. So they... They were very good. And of course, Taiwan's used to this kind of situation because of SARS and everything before. So people are used to the idea of wearing masks yeah. and being safe yeah. about these kind of things. And so life up until a couple of weeks ago has never changed from normal in no, Taiwan. No, it was always, always fine. So a Taiwanese pilot flew in who was infected and started an outbreak. It's not a massive outbreak. No, it's any, quite small by global standards. Yeah, by any means of the imagination. But Taiwan's on lockdown now. Mm -hmm. we, we've got friends in Taiwan who are telling us all about it. And, yeah. you know, it's, it's not that bad. Yeah, it's not, it's not horrible, but at the same time, it's definitely, they're taking it very serious. Yes. I mean, they've, they recently arrested this nutty American who was refusing to wear a mask. He's like, I don't want to wear a mask, etc. And they caught him four times, fined him four times, and eventually they were like, okay, screw you, dude. And they've, they've locked him up. Probably going to deport him. Yeah. So, you know, they Good. are taking it very Good. seriously. Yeah, I mean, come on. It's the rules there. You know, let's go, go deal with it. Anyway, so um, they've landed now and they're going to give the COVID vaccines. And they had a little, it was quick. They landed for like three hours or something. They had a little press briefing. At press meeting. Wen, yeah. Um, yeah, met the president. the president. You can call her a president because she was actually elected. She is a president. Yeah, yeah China's trying to pull this thing where she, they call Xi Jinping their leader a president now. Don't mm. fall for that. another dog whistle. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Uh, so yeah, here you can see some of the speech. little speech things that happened there. Uh, so let's go back. Yeah, so basically it was a diplomatic endeavor, and it was something that would never. I honestly was shocked. If I'm totally honest with you, yeah, I was shocked. Winston and I were both talking about this. We've been normalizing. Yeah, I say we. I'm, yeah. What am I, Ch Chinese nationalist? <laughs> we Americans, yes, us, us <laughs> we as as the Western world, I can say, mm -hmm. um, have been normalizing relations with Taiwan. It's something we never thought we would saw in, see in our lifetime. Mm. We were so far away from, especially like in the past two presidencies, so far away from Taiwan. It wasn't even funny. Because mm. you have to tell the one. You part have of China. to. I mean, that's. I'm not blaming any any administration. You know, the, the thing is, in my lifetime in South Africa, when when I was growing up, Taiwan was a strong business partner with South Africa. Okay, and they South Africa did not adhere to this one China policy, and so I have great Taiwanese friends from when I was right. growing up. People that right. are still some of my best friends in the world that I keep in contact with. These guys are awesome, right? But then somewhere along the lines, I think it was in the late 90s or mid 90s, um, China basically said, offered uh, the South African government this ultimatum. You want to do trade with us? You want to be part of this BRICS thing and all that? You better drop Taiwan as your trade partner. And so they did. And they basically just chose China Chose China instead. So yeah, I saw how terrible it was when they enforced that on. So all the, the Taiwanese people were left high and dry. They used to have a Taiwanese printing press and make local Taiwanese newspapers. It's a hell of a lot of trade. It was really good during like the 80s and stuff. And uh, it kind of just all went to shit because now they want to just deal with corruption and stuff. Yeah. You know? So as, as I was saying, the, the previous, I'm not it, it, blaming any previous administration sure. on this, but what it was is that we had to recognize the one China policy, which means that Taiwan, we do have amazing relations with them, but unofficially. Unofficially, yeah. So everything official, we would never see a U.S. airplane landing with diplomats to go discuss vaccination trades. Like this is a 
big deal. You guys got to understand. Yeah. And China has always said, if you break that one China policy, then Taiwan's done. They, they used to threaten. They used to threaten the rest of the world and say, if if you cross that red line, America, and you start recognizing Taiwan more officially, then Taiwan's done. We will take it in, in, immediately. Yeah. Right. And you know what? Finally, the U.S. grew a pair. Mm. And for some reason, now we are doing some seriously diplomatic things with Taiwan, and China's doing nothing about it. Yeah, it's kind of funny. Oh my we, we've gosh. got this fantastic cartoon, all right, uh, which we wanted to share with you, which, you know, was going around. And for those of you at home, what you've got here, it's one of those typical cartoons people draw these days. It's kind of like a white outline. It's got the American mm. flag mm. as the face. It's playing around with a little, little model ship, right? Whoops, let's get over here. And then uh, next, kind of just... Why does this keep going back and forth? There we go. Kind of plays with this little model ship, you know, taking it through the, the Taiwan, Taiwan Strait. Strait. So that's between China and Taiwan. Because, you know, China gets really pissed off because it's a freedom of exercise movement that, uh, you know, America does quite often. Because we're talking about international waters here, okay? Yes. You're supposed to be able to, but China kind of claims all of this stuff. And they're like, don't meddle with our internal affairs and stuff. So it's kind of like poking the bear here. And America likes to do that a lot with China. <laughs> So they send their warships, you know, yeah, little yeah. exercises yeah. to go through. So you see, you see the, the the cartoon. He's like playing with his little ship, American ship, and then you can see China getting really, really like angry and sweating a lot. And then you see the the Chinese character in this cartoon gets super mad, slams his hands down on the table, and says, "Don't cross the line. We will burn Taiwan with fire of war if any U.S. aircraft." De- dares to land on Taiwan. Now, I actually wanted to say this is not a dramatization. This is literally what China says all the time. Yes. They said that if any, um, you know, naval ship docks yep. in the port of Taiwan, that they will take back Taiwan and it'll be an act of war. And that's happened and nothing happened after that. So now you see it's like in the cartoon, they're really like going over the top. Um, so what is the American? Uh, he, th- he thinks person? about He's, it. Yeah, he's thinking about this. Hmm. He <laughs> picks up his model plane, a C-17 Globemaster III. He's flying it around in front of the Chinese. Whistling. Uh, yeah, whistling. And slams it down on Taiwan. <laughs> um, and then you can see the, uh, the, the Chinese character in this cartoon just uh, calls up Taiwan and says, we can get angry as we wish to Taiwan. <laughs> and Taiwan on the phone is like, what the hell? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so this is just kind of a funny visual representation of what uh, has been going on. And it's so, true. Yeah, so very importantly, we were waiting for, as China watchers, we were waiting for China's response because they've been blustering and they, they didn't expect the USA to call their bluff. No. So they've been blustering and saying, we will take it over, we'll blow it up. You know, this is an act of war, stay out of our internal affairs. This is the final line. The PLA is ready and armed. We're yeah. going to do live missile strikes. We're going to do all, all this stuff. Yeah. And we'll practice amphibious uh, landings, all this kind of stuff. Yeah. And we'll show actually what their response was, their, their spokesperson. Yeah, let me get back to that. Um, I, I also have to say that since the American plane has landed in Taiwan, they've actually scaled back on their... That's what I was going to say is they haven't said shit. No, they actually, now <laughs> in their actual media briefs, they yeah. didn't mention the plane no. landing at all. No, no one's mentioning that. Some nationalists online are very pissed off with the Chinese. Yeah. Government. They're like, it's a bit of a dissent there. It's like, why, why are you not taking action? You've been saying you're going to take action. This is our chance. America right. landed. Why are we not attacking? Right. And they're kind of disappointed. Because, and the thing is, China didn't really want this news to get out. No. Right. But the fact is, when you promise your citizens over and over again, we're going to take back Taiwan, we're going to blow up Taiwan, we're going to do this because we deserve to. We are Chinese, we're, yeah. we're strong, this yeah. is our land. The people are going to start to get a little bit disappointed. Boy who cried wolf syndrome over here. Yeah, absolutely. Here. So let's see what the uh, foreign spokesman ministry dude had to say about all of well, this. We urge the U.S. to adhere to the One China Principle and the provisions of the China-U.S. joint communiques. We urge them to immediately stop any form of official exchanges with Taiwan, handle the Taiwan issue with caution, and refrain from sending the wrong signals to separatist forces, so as not to cause further damage to bilateral relations and the peace and stability of the Taiwan Strait. Okay, so, so yeah, I, I just wanted to say... Um, Xi Jinping has a new campaign mm-hmm. that we've spoken about, and that's called the softening of China's image. And this whole idea is that the wolf warrior stuff didn't work. Yeah. They're not going to admit that it didn't work. No. But Xi Jinping is saying we need to take a softer approach. And it's it's a bullshit excuse to make the world calm down, not laugh at China anymore about the wolf warrior tactics. Yeah. 
and then also say, oh, China's being reasonable now, sure. right? And you're actually seeing that. It's it's all bullshit. Like yeah. you're actually gonna see more propaganda come out of it. Yeah. But the whole new softer approach, you're actually seeing this. They're they're pretty calm about this. They're not doing anything about it. And it's what it's it's our dream. Mm-hmm. What's happening is that Chinese people that were originally very, very, very nationalist in the beginning are now starting to question the government. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's like what what's going on here? Yeah. I just have to say that uh, the way China has dealt with Taiwan and the COVID-19 situation has been disgusting. Uh, yeah, mainland China yeah. has been, from the get-go, trying to block vaccines from going to Taiwan. Yeah. They've meddled in deals that China had with German vaccine companies. They slammed Japan for yeah. sending vaccines to Taiwan. Yeah, when, when Japan you know, said, look, we want to help out and send vaccines, China had a hissy fit about it. Yeah. They They're actually, mad. They actually don't care about human lives. They no. don't care about like nope. the welfare of people. Nope. You know, as long as it works for their political agendas, maybe. You know? Yeah. yeah. They want to be the ones to be like, we're sending our Sinovac and you owe us. Yeah, and it, we you can only take ours because yeah. you are part of our country. Yeah, you're right? only allowed to take ours. They literally denounced Japan when they offered vaccines to Taiwan. Yeah. And this is the country that said, let's not politicize the vaccines. Mm, exactly. Anyway, it's just kind of ridiculous. Um, and uh, yeah, normally this, what you would see here with this uh, Ministry of Foreign Affairs yes. would be blustering and angry and like, you know. What you're seeing right now is chi- the China has put, put the muzzle on these guys. They must yeah. be seething. Yeah. <laughs> kitten warriors now. Little kitten warriors yeah. now. Yeah. Yeah, interesting that. Anyway, um, now the main part of this is not this whole Taiwan thing because that's, that's hilarious. It's good. Um, but we, we honestly need to talk about something very important mm-hmm. here, guys. The Chinese government and the Chinese propaganda department knows how to take advantage of Western social media in order to push its censorship across, Mm -hmm. okay? In order to push its homegrown censorship across the world and in order to censor you. So you, the listener out there who's watching this right now, pay very close attention because this is happening to you without you knowing it. Uh, Why don't you go and start talking about the emoji little thing that happened? Okay, so this is internal. Yeah. So Weibo is like Twitter. Mm. People are saying your audio is too quiet, so bring it up closer. Oh, okay. So Weibo is like Twitter for China, right? Internal Twitter. And WeChat is basically their messaging app. We can say it's like Facebook Messenger or WhatsApp, okay? Mm -hmm. Now, what happened was right before the Tiananmen Square uh, massacre date, so we're talking about- The anniversary. The anniversary, right? The June 4th, right? Mm -hmm. Right before that, they made it so you couldn't change your your profile picture. So actually, Mm -hmm. what's really funny is that you can see this very organic conversation that people are having. And they're like, why can't I change my profile picture? They're actually legitimately confused. Now, the reason they they don't want people to change their profile picture is they don't want them to put anything that is in remembrance of Tiananmen Square. Because guess what? There is a subset of Chinese people that are very sympathetic and can remember that time, right? That lost classmates, Mm. that lost family members that maybe even still be locked up. Yeah. Right from this, yeah. and so people do. A lot of people do know what it is, right? So this person says, "Google the date," right? Yeah. This person says, "Well, it's the Tiananmen Square event," and this then they is... said the thirty-two times two event, which is plus th- event. So yeah. you, you have to Google thirty-two times, times two, two, so it's sixty-four and six event. four event six, six four June four. They have to be cryptic about this. Yeah, because everything's blocked. You can't actually say that because no. it, it won't appear because it's filtered out right mm. why it seems that everyone except me knows it so this person genuinely has no idea what they're talking about yeah uh because it's censored in china oh, it's it due says to this it's due date. to this date so they look up the date on 1989 and also i mean this is again i just have to throw this out there guys why do we take a government so seriously yeah. and allow them in the un and the wto when they block their own citizens from using a candle and a cake emoji. Yeah. Because they they literally remove those emojis right before the Tiananmen Square massacre so that people can't remember it. Yes, they and then they put them back after. Yeah, yeah. But it's yeah. during the anniversary like that week or whatever they don't allow these emojis because people use candles as kind of like a candlelit vigil to remember the Tiananmen Square massacre. So they remove the emojis. I mean, how petty is that? All right. How insecure is that? Oh my gosh. Mm. Really though, yeah. you just you never think they'll go lower, but they always yeah. go lower. They always do. They always do. So yeah, let's see what's next on our little list here. If we can get there, it's just taking us any bit of day time. now. To... Yeah. All right. Let's let's move on, shall we? Come on, slide. Just really want to see this. I know you love emojis. this emoji thing, so I'm gonna. There you go. Okay. Whoa. 
Okay, so now let's talk about how this this arm of the um, CCP censorship is moving across the globe. So a lot of people might know who Nathan Law is. If you don't know, he's a prominent uh, democracy rights activist to do with Hong Kong. He's a Hong Konger who's in exile at the moment. Yeah. Is he in Germany right now? Uh, I, don't, I, think, I, think, I so. think so, yeah. yeah. Anyway, he set up a, a website, okay, on Wix. Everyone knows Wix, right? I just made this dope website using Wix. <laughs> you know those adverts yes. that used to run all the time? No, not so dope, Wix, are you? No. Anyway. You're so, a dope. <laughs> Wix, just like Squarespace or any of these yeah. other big hosting companies, you basically set up your website. It's very easy. They've got templates and stuff. So... Wix is an Israeli company, by the way. Okay. It's from Tel Aviv. Okay. And uh, here's the email that uh, Nathan Law got from Wix. It says, you know, because his website just went down. It got taken down. Okay, his website just, boom, it's off. It's offline. So he's like, what's going on to Wix? And they're like, hi, thank you for contacting Wix. We have received a por- report from a law agency. As such, your account was blocked due to the Wix terms of use violation. Please review section 2.3 to understand prohibited uses of users' content. Unfortunately, we will not be able to host your sites or provide you with the content used to build the website. So they blocked and took down his website. This is not a Chinese hosting company. No. Um, Okay, but three days later, it got reinstated. Okay, let me get to that. Let me get to the next one. Okay. So Nathan Law tweeted out, after days of closure, the website, the website 2021hkcharter.com is restored. Yet no explanation from Wix. Hope the service providers understand that they should not comply with CCP to limit free speech. I'm still waiting for an he, I got to say, Nathan, you did a great job restraining yourself and sounding very professional because I would have been all... I would have used different yeah. language. Yeah, so uh, we'll, we'll dis- describe exactly what happened. Um, okay, now that's the next thing. I'll move, move back to that. Um, Where is it? I made some notes about this. Okay. So I'm going to read this out to you guys quickly. We have reviewed. Yeah. So I'm just going to say the the hosting company requested, received a request from the Hong Kong Police Department to disable his website. Okay. Mm -hmm. And they used this new national security law as the reason. Now remember, everyone in Hong Kong was worried about this national security law being passed because it would mean that it doesn't matter who you are, if you Go into Hong Kong. If the Beijing government has an issue with you, they can literally just snap you up and take you into the mainland and for, you can disappear. For context, if mm. we fly into Hong Kong, even just to connect to a flight, yeah. they can send us to Beijing. They will. They would yeah. send us to Beijing. Exactly. 100% guarantee. And the thing is that the way that, that China softened the blow, they said, Hong Kong's not going to change at all. It's just a national security law. So if you're not a criminal, then don't worry about it. It's been used so many times. No, it's been used to censor websites hosted in Israel, for goodness sake. Yes. So basically what happened was the Hong Kong police using the... Um, and by the way, this is just in proxy of the CCP. The CCP does not want this guy mm. out there, Mm-mm. you know, speaking about mm. democracy for Hong Kong and stuff. That's what this is about. Yeah, it's what it's all about. <laughs> so they used this national security law and sent uh, a note, a notice or a demand to Wix to take down the website. Yeah. And they said because... The site contained messages likely to constitute offenses endangering national security and that it would be prosecute, prosecuted if it didn't comply. So Wix would be prosecuted. So they just took it down. So Wix, headquartered in Tel Aviv, said the website was removed by mistake and has been reinstated. This is, what they, this is now their statement. They said, we have reviewed our initial screening and have realized that the website never should have been removed and we would like to apologize. We are also reviewing our screening process in order to improve and make sure that mistakes such as this do not repeat in the future. So it was down um, for three days. All right. But see, this is the first of a couple of things we're going to talk about here. The CCP knows how to take advantage of the freedoms of speech of the West. They know how to take advantage of the law systems of the West, and they know how to take advantage of Western social media like YouTube, Twitter, etc. That's why we get propagandists for the Chinese government having YouTube accounts and yes. putting adverts on our videos yes. so that the Communist Party of China can take out adverts for their propaganda to put on our videos because they know how to game they, the they system. They do that often now. Yeah. Anyway, <clears throat> the, next, the next thing which is, <laughs> yeah, this, the next thing which is actually uh, related to this in a way is on the actual Tiananmen Square anniversary, massacre anniversary, 
if you try to search for images of Tank Man on Bing, Bing is Microsoft's search engine, right? Thankfully, Somebody, no one uses yeah, it. I mean, a lot of people are kind of forced <laughs> to use, use it. I use it in but, China because you could use it without a VPN. Yeah, yeah. But if you searched for Tank Man, you would not get any images of Tank Man. The Tiananmen Square Tank Man would not exist. Yeah, look However, at the, I'll show you some examples after this slide. Yeah, if you went to Google and searched the same thing, Tank Man, all you got was the Tiananmen Square Tank Man. Okay, so let's take a look at the actual blown up complete images. Okay. There's, there's Where's, Bing. Okay, wait. So let's... I put them on okay. top of each other, yeah. Okay. No, so we don't want that one just yet. Right there. All right. So you can see on top, on the top part of the screen here, everyone, let me get us out of there, are the Bing results. And all Microsoft. you can see... Yeah, Microsoft Bing. All you can see are actual just like random tanks from like games, computer games, or like just a picture of a tank or a tank. There's a, even an anime over there with, you know... Not a single Tiananmen Square reference, not a single Tiananmen Square tank person. This is not a mistake, guys. This is like, in America. Tank man means tank man. Yes, and this is <laughs> this is in America, yeah. too, the American yeah. version of Bing. Yeah, this is not China's version. So, yeah. Below, Google, with the exact same search, all of the pictures are about Tiananmen Square tank man or memorials to the tank man. There's not a single one that's not. Right. Okay? But then it gets even more ridiculous. If you searched on Bing... The guy, this guy, Blake Blake. Yeah, so let's make it more specific. Yeah. Searched on Bing, Tank Man Tiananmen. Okay? That's very specific, isn't it? And what do you come up with? You get a picture of Tiananmen Square. You get a couple of, like, soldiers on their segways, you know, in Tiananmen (laughs) Square. And you get uh, just a random picture of a tank. So even you search Tank Man Tiananmen. Okay, so there's no way you could make a mistake here. Not a single picture of... Nope. Uh, tank tank man came up okay and you know what microsoft later released a, a statement to say oh it was due to human error human error human error yeah it's human error that this happened what kind of human error you know what your human error was is that you hired chinese nationalists to run the website right obviously. they have connections to the chinese Not on, they party. also they host a lot of their stuff in china they do. They do. so your human error was the fact that you put profit above human rights, mm-hmm. okay? And you trust a, a government that has a very bad tra- track record of human rights. You can't get away with this kind of thing. But there we go. Here you see the CCP actively censoring Western search engines. There's no two ways about it. This, no. is, the re- this is the responsibility of the Chinese Communist yeah. Party. In, the in our country. Yes. So when you search Tank Man, oh, it doesn't exist. Mm-hmm. Okay. And that's how China runs China. I mean, the Chinese government runs China is mm. bad things don't exist. You search online in China for some information. You're not going to see the bad nope. stuff. Now you can see a small glimpse into what it's like being a Chinese university student, for instance. You're looking up some information online and uh, you're looking for something and you search and no results come up. So you guess it just it never exists. So yeah. it doesn't exist. So you have a very narrow vision of what the world's like because it's only what the Chinese government wants you to see. And someone tells you, hey, you better look up this chemical because it's poisonous. You type it into, uh, you know, Baidu or something. And all it says is, oh, that chemical doesn't exist. There's no such thing. You don't see anything. You're like, okay, whatever. Guess there is move no along. such chemical. Let's move on. It's that kind of thing. It's ridiculous. So there we go. Guess what? It doesn't end there. Okay. We've talked about uh, Microsoft, and uh, how about we move to uh, everyone's second favorite thing, Facebook. All right, everyone loves Facebook, right? <laughs> <laughs> I don't even use Facebook anymore. Yeah. I'm not one of those like hipsters. It's like I don't. It's, it's actually terrible. <laughs> so um, Feng So Zhou over here mm-hmm. was holding a, a Tiananmen vigil, a live a live vigil, like a live stream on Facebook. And it was just the typical thing with candles and remembrance and all that kind of thing. He had about 7,000 people watching, I think, at the time. And it got... This st- Feng Tzu yeah, Zhou guy? Okay. Yeah, if I remember correctly. And it got shut down in the middle of the, in the, middle of the live stream. And this is what it said. Your, your post goes against our community standards on spam. Hmm. Okay. No one else can see your post. We have these standards to prevent things like false advertising, fraud, and security breaches. Mm. Interesting. Mm. Very interesting. So this yeah. was about the Tiananmen Square this Memorial. Was a, just a, you know, like, you know how right now, this year, Hong Kong banned the, the vigil that they have? Because every year in Hong Kong, 
you get a lot of people they all gather yeah. in a public square and they hold candles it's and they have a candle thing. candlelight vigil and they've been doing it for years for decades now all right and this year <clears throat> anyone who were to attend that would be arrested and they did actually arrest the one like one person who tried to turn up and, and stuff like that so it's, it's terrible they cited covid as the reason but of course it's not can i can i make a quick correction real sure. quick um, to the people that are saying that we are lying about the Bing results because when they search Tank Man, it comes up. I think we clearly just said that they said it was human error and, and reverted it. it. So you it morons. is not like that you anymore. Morons. Are you morons. Are you that listen, dense? Listen. Seriously. Anyway. Yes, they fixed it. You can now search Tank Man on Bing and it comes up. But on the Tiananmen <laughs> Square cry. anniversary, it was, you know, I'm going to cry at the... Sorry, but I mean, like, of... we said that, didn't we? <laughs> yes. Okay. Anyway, <laughs> oh. here's the thing, though. They were holding a vigil and an, a, a live stream to remember the Tiananmen Square massacre, and they got shut down for spam. So you know what's happened is you've got thousands of Chinese Communist Party um, yeah. 50 cent army guys yeah. going in and flagging it as spam. Mm -hmm. And, I, you know, like, the algorithm just can't handle it. They're like, why are there... Thousands of people flagging the stream. It must be spam. And then they take it offline. Yeah. See, they know how to take advantage of Western social media. So not only do they shut down people's live streams about Tiananmen Square. Remember the, what was it, the Zoom situation? Yeah, Zoom. Where they, like Tiananmen Square survivors were busy getting together. Having a and memorial. And having a memorial type thing on Zoom and discussing it. And an actual employee of Microsoft, who was a Chinese national who was in China, who kind of... Um, was overseeing this, he got it shut down by falsely accusing them of being pedophiles and stuff and sending all weird emails in their in their name and stuff and got the whole thing shut down. It's crazy how much they've inf infiltrated yeah, Western yeah. social media. So anyway, that's just an example of a couple of the things they did. They took down Nathan Law's website. They stopped being, uh, Bing from being able to search for images of, of Tank Man and they shut down Tiananmen Square vigils on live stream on Facebook. That's right. All in this very short period. So... Everybody out there, I hope you realize that the Chinese Communist Party already has all of its fingers in in the pies around the world, and it already does control what you see to a certain degree. It already does affect the algorithm on YouTube videos like ours, where they go and mass flag our videos and upvote and pay for advertising for, you know, their propaganda. We don't have that kind of backing, nope. so it creates an imbalance. It's something that you have to be aware of. It's it's also something that like there's it's not like you can't do anything. You know the whole joke about writing your congressman. You actually need to do that mm. because the politicians need to be very aware of what's happening. I think a lot of people don't understand the scope of this. Yeah, you right. know what I mean. So write your congressman, get a hold of your government, and make some change. Right? Uh, there is something really. This is Wuma Corner. Dis oh, it's Wuma Corner. Yeah, sorry. So we we should we move into Wuma Corner? Yeah, okay. yeah, we're just gonna move straight, and we'll we'll do some more super chats soon. Wumar Corner, we talk about like the kind of hate and disgusting things that the Wumar are usually up to. And man, do we have a special one for you this time. Yeah, so let me set this up. We were surprised, usually when we talk about Tiananmen Square, there's silence, radio silence from the Wumars, from yeah. the pro-CCP the pro nationalists. Mm. Instead, what we got this time, this is the first time I've seen this, was supporting the crackdown in Tiananmen Square. Yes. It's a good thing that the students got murdered. Yeah. It's not, not denying it, supporting it. Yeah. Right. Usually I used to get, there was no crackdown. Sure. There was no massacre or whatever. That's what China usually says. Mm. This time it's it's good that mm. there was a massacre because we stopped it in its tracks. Well, I, I want you to take a look at these things that were being posted on Twitter by yeah. nas Chinese nationalists, okay? And and tankies and, and, yeah, tankies and Westerners. Also. Westerners yeah, were Western doing this. tankies, of course. They, basically it says, we celebrate this 32nd anniversary of successfully defeating the Western color revolution. Okay, so what they're saying is they're celebrating the Chinese government murdering students. Yes, because correct. what it is is it's uh, they successfully defeated a Western color revolution. Yeah, there's there is this idea within China that it was America that started the Tiananmen Square protest. Yeah, and that it was CIA <laughs> and all that stuff. I'll tell you what. Uh. Oh it's really disgusting. But the irony of this is that these things that they were posting on Twitter, etc., you would not be able to post those within China. Yeah. Because you can't Ex even... Explain that again. You, you cannot talk about the Tiananmen Square incident, even no. if you support it. Yes. Even if you say the government yes. did a good job, you cannot even talk about that. No. It just gets removed. You can't bring it up. So what do they do? They use our Western social media against us, 
go and post this nonsense. I mean, the irony of this. I know, it's the irony. These idiots that do this, can't they see that they're actually using Western freedom of speech to promote their hate speech against... You that know, they can't even promote they, in China. But they can't even do that in no. China. Are they, are they that brain dead? Well, yeah, I mean, it's by design as well. True. Right. <laughs> yeah, yeah, true. But I mean, it's just ridiculous. Anyway, that's the Wumar corner. We just wanted to... But I was that. we were shocked because we like to tell you about how mm. the Wuma are shifting. Yeah, they went from this whole like they, they've shifted about five or six times. It was clear, clear. Uh, what's it called? Centuries of Wuma isms that we've seen. They change sure. all the time to try to change Western narratives. Yeah, and we were shocked to see them go this far. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> It was a bit much. Yeah. All right, we're going anyway. to answer some questions before we move over to worldview. Oh, so. some people were asking. A color revolution is basically mm. when you take a color. So look at the revolution that uh, Hong Kong did. When they Hong Kong protesters yeah. went out there, they used yellow as their color, yes. right? Yeah. Uh, you have another, let's say, the Arab Spring had a certain color. The Jasmine you, Revolution had a certain you'll color. You'll notice it, it either has a, a flower as a symbol yeah. or a certain color. So you'll see people wearing white bandanas yes. or they'll be wearing red sashes. That's or, what a color revolution is. So a color revolution is, is just when, when a group of uh, people usually uprising against communism or even a communist revolution, they will all wear red. Yeah. So it's basically just a, a political movement to either overthrow or make change or something like right. that. Right. I, I misspoke. I meant black. The Hong Kong Revolution was black. Wearing black. Yeah, well, no, um, the yellow, no, yellow umbrella, dude. The first one. Yeah, the yeah, second the, one was black. Absolutely, yeah, it was black. Like, they were arresting people just wearing black. Yellow helmets. Yes. Yellow umbrellas. Yeah, yellow and black, we should say. Yeah. A bee look. It's kind of like when you like get a, a banana that's been bashed around a sure. bit and hangs around in the sun a little bit. Right. It's all yellow and black. Right. That, that was a terrible <laughs> analogy. I mean, I don't know what you're trying yeah. to say. Though. No, no, me neither, really. <laughs> we <laughs> love the Hong Kong protesters. And absolutely. We no, I was there for the 2014 uh, umbrella right. um, movement, and I've got lots of photos and, and video clips, and it was a very special time. Yeah. Mm. Okay, shall we uh, do some... Yes, let's hit some super some chats stuff. before we move on to uh, our worldview. Uh, Chris Heron says, greetings from, greetings from Scotland. Well, first time watching the podcast, I want to show you my sport. Jay Leo says, did you guys just watch the Euro 2020 opener, Turkey versus Italy, right before going live? Uh, we did not. No, sorry, I'm not a big uh, follower of football. I'm myself. American, so we don't watch soccer. We watch American football or olive ball, as we say in Chinese. Explain to me you. why it's called football when this you, is a you, tired hold, conversation. you hold it the whole time. I, I agree with it you. It should be handball. It should be ha No, it's in, well, in Chinese for trivia for you guys, it's called ganlanqiu, which means olive ball. No, but that's what they call rugby. It's also American, Meguo ganlanqiu. I guess there's no difference. No. Olive ball. <laughs> yes, olive ball. <laughs> but they do get uh, football right, tiqiu. Yeah, yeah. But no, actually, just, that's just kickball. Kickball. It's kickball. Okay, never mind. <laughs> Take that back. Yeah. Travix. Um, God, I'm so confused right now. <laughs> okay. Happy Friday, guys. Sending love from North Carolina. Thank okay. you. Charles Carter, thank you for the pink-haired woman saying thanks. I hope you guys enjoyed on Friday. I guess it's more relaxed. We have a lot more viewers, well, we believe can, it or not. We could chill out, have a beer, have a chat. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, I'm, I'm missing my beer part, but... You I know, have seltzer afterwards. water. Yeah. Uh, Case Closed 93, Marvel reference. I see Daniel Drum, Drumbrill and the Ghoulies and other CCP bootlickers are getting together for live streams now. CGTN Hydra to ADV Adventures. <laughs> nice. <laughs> nice. Yeah, and you will see them get together. They're banding up to have strength to support each other's fallacies and lies. Yeah, this is part of the big push for soft power and uh, propaganda. You know. The funny thing is, the more they talk out, the more they respond, is the more the more mistakes they make. Yep. Because uh, when you're lying, it's easy to make mistakes. Mm -hmm. Space Daimyo, uh, please exposing the thinking behind what China does and, and what it does. Hope you get a chance. Just keep exposing to say, it. You know what I mean. Um, be on more shows and expose more people to the truth of China. F the CCP. Thank you. Agreed. Thank you. Raphael Miller, I heard that melody before. Dun, 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 That's the communist song. Sure. Uh, there's no Wi-Fi in the Twilight Zone. Thank you. Number hmm. one fan. Uh, Seth Wins Wilson, is the Conservative Party of Canada that makes China great? I didn't. I don't know anything CBC. about Canadian. Oh, I get it. Conservative get it. Party of Canada. Okay. Yes, there we go. And Jonathan Cabanas, here's to fighting the good fight and remember Tiananmen. Mm. By the way, have you seen Wendover Productions' four-part series in China? He mentions many points that you have made. Um, no, we've seen the Polymatter one. Though. That was fantastic. Yeah, that was very. Maybe good. that's related. Huh? Ma maybe. Mm. Dude, bub, why are milk dogs not hunted as fiercely as birds? Well, it's very simple. Because they provide a service. They provide the milk. You can't kill them otherwise. No, milk you can't milk a bird, right? Yeah, true. If you if you're gonna milk a dog and actually sell dog milk to people, that's your cash cow or your cash sure, dog. Sure. A bird doesn't provide anything except for that one shot kill. You eat it afterwards, right? Yeah, exactly. Right? That's it's very it. Simple. True. Um, Andrej uh, Gracias says, Apple always brags about privacy and how it's a basic human right. 
How do they keep privacy in China or does the CCP have access to user data in China? Messages are stored in the cloud. Uh, that's a, that's a huge thing. Now, look, apparently not American Americans' uh, citizens' data is not stored on yes, the cloud anymore. Correct. But they were trying to at some point. They were. I know people who've worked, um, you know, for Foxconn and all that, that, that do all the things for Apple. And it's the security is very tight there. It is yeah. incredibly tight. I mean, the one guy, and we had this long conversation, who had to go in there. He's a foreigner. And he's like a technician. He had... Uh, rivet like studs on his jeans you know jeans have those little rivets yeah. and stuff and he had to go in for you know a couple of days onto the campus to do work they wouldn't let him in with his jeans on because the the studs were like setting off the metal detector and he wasn't al- you're not allowed to bring in a laptop or bring in a phone or anything like that right they wouldn't let him take his jeans in with him <laughs> so he, he was naked he literally had to sit in his boxer shorts that's, ha- that's hilarious for like a couple of days on campus doing <laughs> his thing that's very freeing though I suppose, but like the security is pretty tight there. Gotcha. Mm. K9 Composer, thank you for all your hard work and your experience are greatly appreciated. Stay awesome. Thank you. Absolutely. You too, mate. Stay awesome. Sander Oswald says CPC means communist polyester costumes. (laughs) I like that one. That's very correct. Yes, that's a good one. Let's ruin, by the way, we need to ruin the CPC thing. Yeah, CPC. Because you have, if you hear CPC, I'm not joking, it is a dog whistle for the. Every time you hear it, you have to know that is the Chinese government actually spreading propaganda. If you yeah. hear anyone say that, so yeah. let's discredit it. Yeah, CPC is a dog whistle. Yep. Uh, Rum runner, the CCP does relieve people's pain. I mean, who do you think's making all the fentanyl? That's true. That's very true. <laughs> Andres yeah. Gracias, would you two consider moving to Taiwan? Isn't Taiwan all good from China and freedom on top of that? Happy cow. Then, yes, of course. absolutely. Um, I keep saying this. If I had to choose a place to live in Asia, it'd be Taiwan. Me too. It's the best of all of Asia. Right. The heart of Asia, as they call it. Yes. Audio Jack. China seems to be like the guy who claims he's stopping a crime from happening, but he doesn't mention that he did it by resisting the urge to commit the crime. That is Oh, that's, up. yeah. Uh, Ivan Pan says, as a Chinese student in U.S. graduating into the CCP pandemic, it's been really hard to land a job, and I might have to go back to China very soon. Haven't been back in years. Any suggestions on surviving? Try your best to stick around, man. Yeah. We love having you here. Yeah, don't, I mean, be be careful. You yeah. Know? I mean, look at the, what's his name, Jiang? What's his name is Jiang? The the professor who just murdered his uh, Communist Party professor. He graduated from Yale, and he went back to China under the promise of getting a promotion and all that, and they just strung him along for five years until he snapped and actually was very pissed off. Not saying you're going to do this. He his life and murdered the Communist Secret Party secretary. <laughs> I don't know what. So just don't, don't be that guy. <laughs> Don't be there. Seriously, uh, keep your head down, avoid mm. political discussions, and you will be frustrated, especially if you're fans of us. Yeah. Uh, I apologize. It, do your best to stay in the U.S. if you can. Yeah. But look, at the same time, if you have to go back to China to you know, follow your dreams and stuff, just remember that there are massive trade-offs if you're going to do that. Yes. Uh, Jedi Don. You won't know the trade-offs until you get there again. Yeah. That's what yeah. we've noticed. Yeah. Uh, Divine Met- Metaphysics. Cheers from Finland. Our country made a statement for businesses to be aware of... Uh, Chinese business counterparts connections in all current and new cases. We actually follow a lot of Finnish uh, media because their reporting has been great on very China. Good, very good. Very accurate. So congratulations mm-hmm. and uh, that's awesome. DTQC says, have you seen CGTN's new post? And that's Chinese state media. Yeah. Uh, about how China is a socialist democracy. Wow! Yeah. And hilariously attempts to prove that it's better than all liberal democracies. Whatever, man. They just wow. come up with names. They just throw names together. Socialism with Chinese characteristics means nothing. That means... No socialism. Whatever, it just means like whatever we decide the rules are. Yeah. That's what it means. Yeah. 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 Don't listen to these buzzwords they use. It's nonsense. That's incredible. Mm-hmm. Azeroth, Azeroth the Grim. Uh, hey, guys. Love your content, lads. Just want to say Jiang uh, Kai-shek saved China from Japan, not Mao. And that is correct. That is absolutely right. Yeah. Well, I wouldn't attribute it to him. I would attribute it to the Chinese people fighting for the KMT. Yeah. Um, KNC engineer, Di Dongsheng's speech boasting about China having U.S. politicians in their pocket, pockets is making a second round on YouTube after being censored once. Any comments on this topic would be appreciated. That speech is such bullshit. Yeah. He goes on to talk about how when Xi Jinping yeah, was showed, yeah, showed up, they could they basically, even in, in Washington, D.C., were able to pull a bunch of connections with a bunch of white American like yeah. politicians. It's just blustering. It's and- bluster. It's what it is made for is for a Chinese domestic audience to say, hey, don't worry about anything. We will take over America. We'll take over the rest of the world. Bide your time. It's fine. It's placation. Sure. Uh, 
That's not to I, say that they don't have No, no, there are. Lots and lots of connections. There are, but it's not to the extent of what you think. It's not like that. Mm. It's not, I mean, uh, I, it pisses me off because it's, it makes it gets such a rise out of Americans. Mm. And its actual intention is just to make Chinese people calm down and stop sure, talking sure. about stuff. Uh, PMB says, quite sad how the CCP has turned a rich culture and an enterprising people into what is essentially a sophisticated mafia and a theftocracy. Correct. That is 100% correct. Remember the hamburger thing? You know, um, I, I had a little, <laughs> you know, we showed this a couple, Did we couple episodes ago. And we showed uh, Kate Quay, who's the CGTN reporter. Remember, yeah. she's left no stones unturned in that central in oh, yeah, square we did. We did of uh, Kashgar yeah. to say, Oh, look, there's, there's no, no genocide, genocide here in this public square. And I turned all the stones over that one. Um, you know, she was all pissed off that Bi- Biden apparently signed this thing into this bill that stops um, American companies investing in Chinese yeah, military. Bill, actually. Right. And she's all pissed off about it. I'm like, hang on a second here. Actually, that's it's got nothing to do with Biden or Trump or anything like that. It's no. got to do with. America doesn't want to keep supporting the growth of the Chinese military. And it's she's quite like, simple. She's really pissed off about it. And, and it turns out we don't want IP theft. You don't want companies in China taking the designs of the military yeah. planes and boats and right. helicopters and stuff. She's like, it's not the same. So I, I put some pictures there of the side-by-side comparisons of the Black Hawk helicopter that's been completely ripped off and the F-35 that's been completely ripped off, all that. And she said... It's not the same. It's called R and D. It's like if you make a hamburger and I make a better hamburger. I'm like, hang on a second. You just cannot. You cannot equate the two. You stole the recipe from a hamburger. You know, that's maybe you could say that. But anyway, that's just a little aside. I thought I'd mention it. No, that's that's yeah. That we, that that comparison was hilarious. Should we move on to what's new? Oh, I'm, sure. I mean, well. Sure. Yeah, worldview, sorry. Okay, so now it's worldview where we talk about everything in the world that uh, has to do with China, usually. Yeah. It's kind of like what's usually. new, but with a different name. Yes. That's why I get it confused. So uh, let's switch on over. What so you guys might know a guy that is always sending us super chats and staying in contact with us. His name's David Pei. He's yes. uh, sporting the Wuma merch over here. Yeah. And he is at the Liberty Sculpture Park Memorial, and that is where we filmed a bunch of episodes. Um, it's a Tiananmen Square memorial put on by Chinese people. And they put up the whole tank sculpture yeah, and a massive six four. Big six four. Yeah. It's really cool. It's up in in uh, Central California, and they just put up a new sculpture called the CCP virus. Yeah, I'll just play this in the background. Yeah, and basically, um, the the artist that's made it, his name was uh, Wei Ming Chen. Yes, he's a Chinese dissident, and yeah. he created this sculpture to actually his his point was to memorialize all the people in the world that died of coronavirus. Yeah, so it's actually a really nice thing. You might notice uh, Lola Farley in the background. Lola Farley's there, and then. Friend our friend is NT. Inti, our friend is a Uyghur. A Uyghur American. Yeah. Uh, these two guys, they went there for the Tiananmen Square Memorial mm. um, on 6 4, on January yeah. or June 4th, mm-hmm. and to see the sculpture. So, this was put on. This huge uh, event was great. Uh, lots and lots of Chinese dissidents came out. I shouldn't yeah. even call it, like, just some people to show their support as well. Yeah. Um, mostly Chinese people to do this because it is, in fact, the biggest victims of the CCP are, in fact, Chinese people, and people yeah. have to remember that. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, this sculpture is put on by uh, uh, Wei Ming Chen, the yeah. artist, and he, I think he did a great job of showing Xi Jinping um, death as well and coronavirus all and in one sculpture. And there's the communist hammer and sickle. On and the, the hammer and sickle is on the side as well. I think it's a great piece. Yeah, um, I like the whole idea behind this Liberty Sculpture Park. Yeah, it's really it, cool, and it's expanding. Yeah, it's absolutely expanding. They keep adding new things, and whenever there's a, like the memorial of the Tiananmen Square massacre, you, you know, people gather there. Which is very cool. So what I just keep keep it rolling. Yeah. Um, when we showed up there, I know we mentioned this last time. When we showed up there, there's a, a gate, mm. and it says in Chinese, "No communists allowed." Yeah, Chinese and English. And in English, yeah, it's yeah. awesome. That's well, I saw that. I was just so weird because you're in this desert oasis, right? Yeah, it isn't just in the desert. And you're in the middle of nowhere, and then all of a sudden you see the sign in Chinese that we can read, and we're like, "It's it's weird. It feels yeah. like you're in China almost." Yeah. You know what I mean? It's like, oh shit, what's this? And this, but it says. Something you would never see in China. Yes, yes. No, no communists allowed. So we go in there and we saw these beautiful monuments mm. um, to all the, the people that died in the Tiananmen Square protest. Yeah. And yeah, they have a really monuments. good uh, tight-knit following there. They have events there and it's really emotional to see what they've done with this park in the middle of the desert yeah. um, on the way to Las Vegas. You know, the weird thing is, is that it was a very long time ago. One of the people who actually set this up in the first place, this 
reached out to me and and you know said hey if you guys ever come yeah. across you should check it out but i thought it was very interesting and i put a star yeah i remember my, yeah on my google maps and i completely forgot about it and then it was when we were deciding to do our trip to vegas on yeah. the motorbikes i looked at my google maps and i'm like what is this star and when i clicked on it i'm like why have we not been there yet? right so why then, why we, we were like how dare we yeah exactly <laughs> so we went there anyway yeah. you can see tons of people came out to this event which is great yeah. Um, wouldn't be surprised if they had a, a couple of Chinese spies in there to report yeah. on people, to be honest. But that's that's what happens. We've mm-hmm. actually seen Chinese spies yeah, at or the people Free Hong Kong at the Free Hong Kong events yeah. here in, in, in uh, They're California. called the Confucius Institute or the Chinese yeah. Students and Scholars Association. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, the, the fact of the it's matter is it's good to see this kind of thing going. We're very happy that, uh, you know, you were allowed to express. There's NT. Link yeah. below. He has a yeah. YouTube channel. He's a Uyghur American. Yeah. Awesome dude. It's just good that people are allowed to go out and celebrate, well, not celebrate, but remember Tiananmen Square and the yeah. various atrocities that the, the CCP has done freely. I just like that they keep adding more. Like yeah. this, because coronavirus is going to, it's it's a Tiananmen Square of our generation. Yes. It's a scourge that happened because of the Chinese Communist Party. Yeah. And millions, millions of people died globally. I don't from think it. people have actually weighed up the gravity of this, yeah. this situation, but... 100% we can blame the way that the CCP dealt with the initial outbreak of the virus. We can blame them for the outbreak across the world. 100%. You doesn't matter if you think it came from a lab or from an animal or from whatever. You can pick and choose your theory. But the fact that they shut China down and stopped domestic flights but allowed international flights out and put out the misinformation that it wasn't a human-to-human trans, uh, transferring virus when they knew er, that it was... That is already enough blame right there. People can understand that it's their fault. It's their face culture, not wanting to admit that something had gone wrong in China, or not wanting to admit that this was a real thing. This is what led to what we have suffered around the entire world. And the always the takeaway, Chinese people are not your enemy. It is the Chinese government. The yes. Chinese people are the biggest victims of the CCP, as you can see 100%. all these people here. These people are not your enemies. These people are your friends. 100%. It is the yeah. Chinese Communist we're all, Party. And, and again, yeah. uh, most of these people are American. We're all American. We're all, we all bleed red. Mm-hmm. I'm not American. I, I bleed in red In this too. crowd, most sure. people are American. Yeah. Anyway, anyway I just wanted yeah. to bring that out to you. Okay. And what else do we have for world uh, worldview? We, um, uh, we have nothing because it's time to move on to our <laughs> Q&A where uh, we answer your questions and you question our answers. So let's get stuck in, guys. Should be fun. Uh, Carlson Coy says, two sessions is going to teach me some Chinese Oh, manners. hang on, hang on, hang on. Yes. So he just learned Chinese manners by making him work for three cents a day. Okay. Uh, Taiwan as a country says, uh, Tu Kuo Kui is a logical fallacy known as what about is What about is a man. Yeah. Uh, PB says, To all men of culture, ignore the damn ponytails. It's <laughs> just a very long head pubes. Nice. Look beyond the soft propaganda. I like that. Um, again, I don't. I never understood the ponytail thing. I, I've never been turned on by hair. I guess there's probably some people that are. It's all about being girly and like. And oh, I get you know, that. Part. It's too. It's yeah. too. Um, get a response like a, the the typical mammalian uh, male response is to protect. You know. Yeah. And, and to yeah. to listen to and to, to white knight for, pay attention white to knight for the CCP. Well, just just to <laughs> to to young attractive women. It's I get just it. Built in. It. It's like all all about the ovaries, man. It's all about, it's all about the ovaries, the eggs. baby. It's all about the eggs. It's all about that. <laughs> Whatever. Yeah, anyway. So yeah, that's it's Philip, just a ploy. Philip B. Um, oh, with a hundred CHF. I think that's Czech Republic. Thank you very much. Some uh, you. support for your awesome channel. Thank you so much. That's very very generous of you. Jonathan, K- we, we don't know. Maybe it's a s- one cent. It doesn't matter. One it's cent still gen- is generous. generous. Yeah. That's what I was gonna say. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Jonathan Case, did you see Prozzi's live stream about Taiwan's anti-communism? Yes. I like the tunnel art. Taiwan's got some really cool stuff with uh, street art going on right now about yeah. all this stuff. It's been it's awesome. Good. Good. And unlike in Hong Kong, when it gets ripped down by Chinese nationalists, yes. um, it stays up in Taiwan stays and it's up. celebrated. And Lenin walls and stuff stay up. Yes. Lazy Ninja UK, first time I've caught you guys live. Keep fighting the good fight. Awesome. More of the Worthless Whips too. Yes. We're working on it. Yes. And we've got a big Worthless Whips yeah. episode coming up. We've been a bit slack on that because We're very busy. I'm, ty- I'm tired of putting out like little snippets yeah, here and there. Yeah. I want to have a proper full episode like me, the MR2 one. So yeah. we're working on that. It will be coming soon. Anthony Saint says, that was a crazy chicken. Did you notice? The bird, yeah. 
it was a bird. <laughs> All right. Yeah. Um, believe it or not, in China, in Chinese, another Chinese. I always throw in these language tidbits. I don't mm -hmm. know if you guys care or not, but bird or ch chickens are not considered birds in China. Mm. There's a separate word. It's not a nyao. It's a yeah. ji, and ji is like a chicken. So you have lots of different types of chicken. Like For TNG. example, TNG is a field chicken, which, which you might think you might think is a pheasant, <laughs> no. but it is a frog. Yeah, it's a frog <laughs> because you can eat it like oh, a chicken. Oh, look, it's a field chicken. Watch out! <laughs> quack quack! It's like bouncing around. Correct. Watch out for that field chicken Correct. over there. Just like an alligator is an actual. It's actually it's a, a fish. fish. Yeah. It's not a reptile. It's it's a, uh, it's, uh, uh, yeah, disgusting fish or whatever. Yeah. Well, <laughs> you know, past chew. Uh, mm -hmm. Thank you very much. Argondo, a shekel for getting the truth out about the CCP. Thank you. Thanks for all your great content in Taiwan as a country. We Thank agree. You very much. We agree. Mm -hmm. David Pei, uh, that's the guy you saw in the Wu Mao uh, shirt in front of the uh, CCP virus thing. Yes. Cat got Wolf Warrior's tongue all of a sudden. Yep. Yeah, in fact, it's the leadership muzzling them. Mm -hmm. Janky Ramen, any anecdotes of witnessing how someone started to question the CCP? How difficult are the first steps? Thanks for all that you do. Uh, yeah, I mean, I during my time in China, I did meet people Me too. who were starting to yep. question yep. certain things. But the thing is, they just didn't have a way to find out the information. You know, no. like the average no. person doesn't have access to a VPN or anything like right. that. So like we said, if you search anything about the past bad things about China, there's always an excuse or it's just absent. So it's tough. It's very tough. That's right. Mm -hmm. Canadian Greg says, love the CCP commentary from you guys. Support you both on Patreon and here. Thank, Thank you. you. You guys have really poor takes on COVID, though. You can't be perfect. Cheers, mates. Hey, agree to disagree. Rum Runner, should you guys visit Dharamshala, India, home of the Tibetan government in exile? That's where, yeah, that's mm. where they are. I'm going there next year to study Bo Bodhskad, which is Tibetan language. Interesting. That's cool. Well, keep us, keep us up to yeah, speed. Yeah, maybe you can send us some, some info on how Tibet should look. Yeah. Uh, PB, in the early 70s when the Soviet Union was at its peak... With Brezhnev at its helm, it seemed unimaginable that it would fall 18 years later. Just saying, that's true. Yeah, um, that's true. Yeah. That is very true. Yeah, I like the I like the optimism. Now all we need is um, David Hasselhoff to sing his freedom song on the the Berlin Wall. Yeah, again. maybe he can make a new one with a light up jacket. Yeah, mm. that's that's what we need in 2021. Yeah, Ryan Jones, it's about time that the U.S. openly supported Taiwan. We're getting there. Yes, progress. Yes. Yes, uh, this is a great thing, and I hope it Taiwan continues. Taiwan is a is a beautiful, wonderful place, and anyone who's visited Taiwan will be able to attest to this. It's yeah. such a. An I've awesome never heard place. negative things about. It's it. So good. <laughs> I lived there, and it was it was amazing. And Taiwan's never trying to strong arm everyone no. around the world and be a such bully. a polite society yeah. as well. Yeah. Case closed ninety three here in Florida. Our governor uh, Ron DeSantis just signed a bill with Taiwanese diplomats around him. The bill limits Chinese involvement in our academic and scientific institutions and strengthens our ties with Taiwan. Which is what That's we need. fantastic. That's what we need. Props to your, uh, yeah. props to your governor in Florida. Mm -hmm. Black Halo Six C Seventeen Globemaster Three. That is the coolest damn name I've ever heard. It's really cool. Is a heavy lift capable of moving Abrams and Apaches? Wow. Yeah. Tanks and choppers. That's that's yeah. crazy. There's a better suited Air Force aircraft that could move three senators and staff. There was other stuff on that plane for sure. Now I don't I don't agree with that. What I actually think I think that's bullshit. I do think it was made to set it set. Oh yeah, but they used it message. specifically because yeah. they, if they used a civilian, you know, Boeing or something, it's or whatever a private plane, it'd be like. Psh, it's it was not, to piss off China. It's not sending a proper message. China was like, draw the line if a U U.S. military aircraft lands. So, so they, what do they do? Military it's aircraft. Like a U.S. military. Yeah. That you don't have to be so so tinfoil hat about what was on the plane. It, they can do multiple drop offs if they needed to, guys, yeah, or yeah. find a lot better ways to transport this sure. than the most press covered airplane. Exactly. You know. Yeah. Anyway, Shen Lei says, Winston, you're right. Some of those Nanjing protesters were found to have posts supporting the Hong Kong police. I can send on Patreon. Please, Actually, please do. I did. I, I did get those. So, but send them to um, me yeah. anyway. I yeah, appreciate sure. It. I would. I would expect so. And yeah. It always bites you in the ass. It's it does. This, you know, it's so easy to judge other people until you're in their shoes. Mm. You know, and it's very frustrating. It is. So, it is. You know, and I'm not. I, I I don't believe in karma. I don't think that they deserve that. No. What I do do. What I do hope it's a wake up call. Yes, it's got to be a wake up call because it's you next. Yeah. Because. Everything's fine and dandy when you think everything's going your way. And yeah. especially in China, what happened with these students is they're like, I'm paying for my bachelor's degree. I'm going to graduate and get my job. And then suddenly the government changes something. Oh, you're not getting a bachelor's degree yeah. anymore. You're getting a vocational degree. And that means shit. And you can't get a government job with that or anything. 
It's garbage. So all these years they've been studying and the money they've paid is now down the toilet. Suddenly they're like, wait, that's you can't do that to me. And the government's like, uh-uh, I can't. The thing is, they think they can. Yeah. They, the, the protests happened very organically. It wasn't some secret thing like the government's going to come after us if we protest. They've been told over and over again by the CCP that they are a free country. Yeah. That they have democracy. Yeah. That they have rights. They have, they have freedom of speech. It's all in the propaganda. Sure. So it comes back to bite the CCP when their students go, wait a minute, I can't do these things. Yeah. And then they have to send the SWAT team to go F them up. Yeah. Beat them up, arrest them. Yeah. Now they're in a lot of trouble. So they have to now realize that the people in Hong Kong were fighting for their cause, which in their cause was the erosion of their freedom. And they wanted to maintain their freedom as the government had promised. Just like the government promised those degrees to be bachelor's degrees. Yeah. The government promised that they would not meddle with Hong Kong's internal affairs for 50 years. Yeah. Yeah. And they broke that promise overnight, just like they broke yeah. the promise for the degrees. So you have to understand, when you're facing a situation where you have no control over your government, you will change your tune very quickly when it's your turn that comes around. Yep. It's you know, a selfish thing. Keep feeding the crocodile, hoping it'll eat you last. Right. Correct. PB says, what if it's someone's birthday on June 4th? Do they just celebrate it on a different day to avoid misunderstanding with the authorities? Oh, yeah, because of <laughs> candles and birthday cakes. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, who knows? Who knows? Uh, Sibtarshi Sengupta says, Winston's story about the Republic of South Africa being forced to recognize one China is very relatable. Jiang Zemin's government asked India to recognize Taiwan as part of the PRC in exchange for recognizing Sikkim as Indian land. Mm. Interesting. Yeah. Uh, Victor Washington, excellent insights on China always of china always thank you yeah oh absolute my God, pleasure. why do you gotta do this to me yeah. i, I apologize does, uh, okay, da, da, okay. Uh, uh, andrus lellis thank you 65 maths 65 are you going joe, joe rogan podcast by any chance here's the deal we want to we're, we're happy to go on people's podcasts yeah that's fine but again i mean we get this question all the time and i appreciate that that you guys approve of that you don't just get to go on stuff you yeah. know what i mean you don't just go hey i'm gonna go on Right, that's not how it works. No, I mean... Uh, people, I would say hundreds of people have tried to get his attention about us. Doesn't happen. If he doesn't want us on, then he doesn't want us. He doesn't like us, right? That's yeah, like... I mean, maybe he does like us. Maybe he does like us. Who knows? Shen Lei, everyone that disagrees with me is a color revolution. That is absolutely the this, this CCP logic. Yeah, correct. And I, I was, wasn't surprised, but I, I was so quickly, the CCP, after the student protests in Nanjing... The first thing that they went to is that it was a U.S. government operation. Sure, they it's did like, straight away. Why would the U.S. government care about what? Chinese students? They probably didn't degrees? even know about it. No, <laughs> you know what I mean. Well, they're sending in their CIA operatives who are like I'm to go gonna... check degree designations. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> It's dumb. Remember when they uh, called my friend, who's a British guy, CIA operative, and had simple yeah. pictures of him? He's yeah. just a photographer, English He's teacher. He's a photographer, English teacher in Hong Kong. Yeah. From England. Yeah. And they were like circulating his picture <laughs> as if he's a CIA in state agent. Media. Oh, man. Oh, well. Nikki, uh, well, they give us, they give a lot of people credit for being so powerful. Apparently, I'm CIA. You, apparently, you are. Yeah. I guess I'll never know. Yep. Nikki, uh, thank you very much. Return to Orc Monkey. Thank you for oh, changing your name. Oh, very good. Uh, we thought the work kept me up too late to catch the podcast. Uh, glad I could make glad it. Glad you could make glad it. Glad you monkey. Oak monkey. Yeah. Uh, Fudmucker says, thank you for your hard work and bring the real, new, real news about CCP and China to light. They Pleasure. cannot hide their bad deeds and lies forever. Mm -hmm. uh, Seth Wilson, Winston, if it was possible to naturalize as a citizen of China, would you have done so? Uh, I probably would have yeah. at some point. You would have, yeah. yeah. I wouldn't have. Not now. No. No. No, <laughs> no, no, but back when, you know, when I was living there in the beginning, up until about 2013, I would say, I was very positive about the direction China was taking. Mm -hmm. And it certainly offered more opportunity uh, to me than, um, you know, being a South African citizen. And yeah. the reason being as well is the hassle of me getting that visa every year or every two years or whatever in China was also a huge drawback. Yeah. I was trying to settle down and I never could. And if I could have naturalized to a point where I could now settle down and start actually, you know, um, planning my future properly because I'm not worried that next year it's just going to be uprooted when they change the visa laws again, I probably would have. Mm -hmm. But when things started to change for the worse, absolutely not. No, I would never, no. ever. I'd rather... That's, you know. That shows you how, how much it changed, though. Because, yeah. uh, yeah. like, it's not an outlandish concept. I'm thinking back to 2013. Mm. It wouldn't be an outlandish concept for us to consider that. Yeah. You think about 2016, 17, 18, that's an outlandish concept. Uh, absolutely. And, I mean, obviously, I would have kept dual citizenship yeah, if that was course, the case. But, you know, that's something that I would have definitely done. Yeah. 
Uh, Dennis Stafford, thank you. The Eamon one, thank you. Three Crean, have you grabbed the Mass Effect LE? Yes. yes, I have. Legendary Edition. And yes, thank you for bringing that up. I'm really enjoying playing through it again. You know, uh, I played the original Mass Effect when it came out, like straight the first, like when it just came out. And I've been in love with it ever since. I wear the patch proudly on my jacket, the N7 patch. So to play Legendary Edition again, it's a treat. I'm going through it all over again, and it's a lot of fun. Yeah. Koala 1203, here's some free $5 eucalyptus money. Yes. Any thoughts on doing a collab with the Ushanka show? Um, actually, I've, I've been in contact with him for a while. I helped him with his channel. Um, and we, we talk every now and then. I love, love his channel. Maybe I'll do something with him in the future. Anyways, keep up the good work on China. Thank you. Okay. Org Borg. Uh, I just realized this is live. Thought nice. I was watching yesterday's replay. Welcome to the live. And you know, it's going to be on Fridays from now on. So hopefully yeah. you can join us in the future too. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Hex and X. Thank you. Thank you. Lady Katie. Uh, see eBay listings. Shipped from Hong Kong, China, Taiwan, all of them. Oh, okay. Does it now show you where they're shipped from? I don't know. Oh, that's cool if they do. Okay. I'll look into um, that. Thank you. Leo M. We need a hot box and with series. What? Okay. Not quite sure. Oh, like smoking a weed with people series? Oh. Not really our forte. Yeah. Uh, Jonathan Cabana. The worst person to ask to do that. I'm really not a big fan. Well, neither of us use. <laughs> Jonathan Cabanas not that this is an issue no, no, no. Uh, it's a polymatter my mistake yeah we did yeah that's correct yeah. we love that series yes yeah yeah we did watch that it's very good and like for someone who hasn't lived there he got pretty much everything spot on yeah he was great a couple of things of the real estate that he didn't quite sure but it was right. by and large it was a great yes, series yes absolutely I recommend it to everyone yeah and Justin Kim says my wife's uncle is very moderate US citizen he said killing thousands of rebellious, uh, rebellious population is justified to unify the country together, very scary. Yeah, that's something yeah. you hear a lot from a lot of Chinese nationalists, you know? Yeah, it's Unfortunately. not nice, not nice. Human life, there's no, I mean, there's no, kids are not taught right and wrong mm. in the education system, and everything is justified, the party says, so. Yeah. It's pretty messed up. Yeah, it totally is. Uh, Shen Lei says, the government, Japan's government passed a resolution for Taiwan to join the WHO. Yes, yes. and the Prime Minister of Japan said that Taiwan is a country, which is, Yes, it's fantastic, oh, I love finally, it. finally. I love finally. It. finally. Taiwan's getting the recognition it deserves. Yes. Zero Kiryu says, I uh, watched you guys for years. We need our politicians to stop on the take and make laws that stop money from going to China. Agreed. Yeah. A few selfish Westerners are feeding the biggest monster on earth to the peril of many. Yes, I agree. correct. James says, hi from the great white north. Have a beer on me, you hosers. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate it. Ch uh, mm-hmm. You used to be called Tiananmen Square Massacre. I will not say your current name. <laughs> okay. It would be amazing if the G7 jointly announced that they will boycott the Beijing Olympics. That would be fantastic. Oh, we are waiting for that glorious day. <laughs> We're having a big win in 2021 thus far. Yeah, and again, this policy. is not about punishing China. It's about no. It's about leveling the playing field yes. here. You, you cannot have human rights atrocities and behave in a terrible no. way like China is right now, the Chinese government, I should no. say again. And still expect everyone to treat you as if you're like a first world country and it's okay. Let's go to your Olympic Games. Let's send you aid. Let's help you with this. Let's help you with that. Let's respect you in every way, shape and form. Because China shows no respect to the rest of the world. That's the thing. If you want to be respected, you have to first earn that respect. And China is not earning respect. That's the thing. Yeah, behave. Stop being a dick. Well, every, everyone should. People call out the USA on its bullshit all the time. Yeah. People call out all other countries on its bullshit all the time. Yeah. No one's calling out China that, nope. because they're not allowed to for some reason. David Neufeld, 2021 International Dragon Boat Festival in Hong Kong, COVID willing. COVID mm -hmm. is not God. Thank you very much. <laughs> yeah. We'd love to go, but have uh, undermined the CCP too much in Vancouver. Yeah, that's unfortunate. KW in New York, upstate. I think Ali G was a Uyghur. Really? <laughs> Well, he's Israeli because he's <laughs> Sasha Baron Cohen. Oh, yeah, that's right. Uh, Reality Hijack, do you guys have any special plans for White Boy Summer? Chill, Matt. Don't panic. I'm just memeing. I love you guys. Stay awesome. What do you think? I'm some sensitive little young man? <laughs> Ernest Cross. Better thank check you. your whiteness over there. Yeah, better check. Let me see. Yeah, yeah. pretty white. Mm. Uh, KWNY Upstate. She, 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 a pet. It's like chia pet. I get okay. it. Um, mm hmm. Formerly named Tiananmen Massacre. Is it true that the majority of Chinese mainland don't believe that COVID-19 originated in China? We addressed yeah. that last time. Yeah. Uh, yeah, the majority of Chinese people think it came from the U.S. Yeah, no, they've been... A good chunk, I should say. Yeah, not the majority, but a good no, chunk. A good chunk. Brainwashed into thinking. By the way, i got to tell you one thing. Um, all the doctor friends that I have in Shenzhen have been 
run ragged. They had three days to test the entire city. A population of what, 16 plus million? Three days. And I think the reason for this is because of the Gaokao exam. And they wanted to make sure that everyone had been tested before the Gaokao. So all of my doctor That's friends like the SATs. have been working like ridiculous, like 19, 19 hour shifts and stuff all day, testing, 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 testing. And each, because each area where you've got a clinic or a hospital, they're responsible for a certain amount of neighborhoods and they have to get everyone tested. It's been insane. You don't hear about this in the news. People think it's all fine and dandy over in China. It's locked down to all hell. People are you, getting mass tested everywhere. Do you want to know something really interesting about that? Is yeah. that that will be used by Chinese government to, and they do do this right now, for soft power to say, look at how quickly we can mass test everyone. Do you know what they're doing? Because it's a quota. It's for the Gaokao, right? Yeah. So you think, oh, they can test 16 million people in three days. That's amazing. Yeah, it's really hard for the doctors and stuff. But at the end of the day, at least they can do it. Do you know what's happening? They're creating super spreader events. Yeah. These people are lined up on top it's of each insane. other, left and right. Same with the mass vaccination thing. Everyone's yeah. lined up. Lots of people know masks. They're coughing on each other and they're spreading COVID again. So dumb. It's because of these quotas. Yeah. You try to control too much and it, it bursts at the seams. Yeah. And find out what happens out of all that. I'll keep in touch with all yeah. my friends. And, not they're, that, they're, not that they'll be allowed to say anything. No, no, of course. And, you know, the problem is that they are suffering greatly right now. Yeah. Yeah, that's, that is the point. Yeah. Dog Speak says, salty cracker, not a pizza you mentioned a couple weeks ago. He's a fan. I have okay. no idea who this is. Okay. You guys should collab. Definitely a break the internet. Re. Okay. <laughs> Name dropping again. <laughs> don't, sorry, <laughs> we don't, we don't know who that is, but yeah, thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Craig Christensen, first time seeing you live. Awesome. I find your China perspective spot on. I lived in Hong Kong and China from 1991 to 2003. Mm -hmm. That's a good time. Uh, was in Tiananmen for the fourth anniversary. Empty, but two buses of U.S. protesters. Huh. It was interesting. Um, actually, Americans protested in Tiananmen Square. Mm. Isn't that interesting? I actually, when was it? It was probably in about 2008 or nine. I went to Beijing and I happened to be in Beijing on the anniversary mm -hmm. of the Tiananmen Square mm -hmm. protest. Mm. And it was mm. messed up. Like they... We're not allowing people like foreigners anywhere. We were there. Like, we were there. Was that on the we were there. anniversary? Yeah. Because the, we were. That's yeah. why we were so guarded about right. it. Right. And previously, I'd gone as well. Oh, where, you did. Yeah. Oh. The first time. The first time I was in Beijing, I didn't understand what was going on, but there was a huge amount of heightened security. Like I got off to go see the Tiananmen Square, and they had all the scanning machines and stuff. But they checked me. They double checked me. They wanted to see my phone. Mm -hmm. And at the time, there were no smartphones. I had one of those like. Uh, you know, those like Razer, Motorola Razer phones mm -hmm. and stuff. I wanted to check everything. And then I went in and it was like empty and it was, it was just really kind of crazy. And then I realized, hang on a second, it's because it's a fucking anniversary. And it was like, it just clicked. But yeah, when we went that time as well, we were seriously concerned. It was, it was a bit worrying. <laughs> yeah. Uh, it, it's just part of me wanted to drop down and... <laughs> and roll around start, and yeah. get a free Tibet flag or something. Get a free Tibet, get to do it all, you know. <laughs> get as much as I could done. Indo-Pacific and World Affairs, thank you. Mm -hmm. Zephyr Chan, what do you think of the CCP's crackdown on the Hong Kong film industry? It sucks, because Hong Kong film industry used to be freaking awesome. It was awesome. amazing in the 90s, the 80s and the 90s. Stephen Chow my films? Favorite. Amazing. Yeah. My favorite, like we genre. watch Hong Kong movies all the time. All the time, it's one of our favorites. Yeah. Uh, cinemas can't screen films that are unfriendly to the CCP. That's correct. Yeah. And mm -hmm. now the national security law is going to extend to censor media in Hong Kong. Yeah, obviously. Films. Well, it already has. I know, but it's it's official now. Okay, so great. Uh, well, it's about to be. Yatina P. How many countries can be China be split up if it if it falls? Um, how should it be set up to max ma maximize the benefits from the citizens and stop relapsing into one? There's a lot of theories about that online. You're not going to see it happen, unfortunately. Yeah. Uh, it's just a fantasy yeah. uh, amongst many people. And again, I, you know, China falling apart and collapsing is not a fantasy of mine. It's no. China becoming a, a fair country is my yeah, fantasy. Yeah, that's it. I mean, look at Taiwan. If China could be anything close to what Taiwan yeah. is, it would be the best country in the yeah. world. Yeah. You know? Phil, uh, Winston, watching one of your videos led me to look up a couple of Taiwan number one <laughs> clips on YouTube. Thanks for exposing yeah, me to Yeah, that's this hilarious. You know, like in those online gaming sessions where they're like, Taiwan oh, yeah. number one. That's hilarious. Yeah, I'm I glad have, you found I have that. Taiwan number one t-shirts. Yep. Uh, Mike Hunt. Um, <laughs> you keep uh, saying it. <laughs> it's, well, of course. I don't have one, but, you know, it's, <laughs> I have to acknowledge his name. What if his name was actually Mike Hunt? That would That'd be, be very, terrible. Very yeah, imagine bad. growing up with <laughs> that as a name. Well, Mike Hunt says, Mike Hunt says, my, hey, guys, love the content. Winston, what are your plans 
after a USA V6 buyers, will you be able to get another one? Obviously, I'm planning to try and <laughs> stay not, as long as we, we holiday, have a guys. we have a company to run yeah. here. You know, <laughs> let's yeah. let's not be so pessimistic yeah. here, guys. Um, you know, I I want to make sure that my daughter grows up in her own country. Yeah, she's, she's American. American, born yeah, and raised. She's, she's American, so. Eve from Scotland, Black Flag, blessings, guys. Thank you. Lou M, any comments on the Chinese entertainment industry and fan shipping? What? Fan shipping. What do they ship fans? I actually don't know. Like no. ceiling fans? No idea. I don't know. Sorry. Edgy number one. You're right, C-Milk. Maybe they were looking at the wrong lab. Uh, likely from the BSL3 lab close to the wet market. Oh, and long live Taiwan. The whole lab thing. I mean, like back then we had nothing to go off of. Yeah. We just knew that they were working on coronaviruses in labs in yeah, Wuhan. In so Wuhan, so yeah, it is what it is. Occam's razor. Yep. Phil, uh, hopefully after she, China gets uh, Mikhail Gorbachev. That'd be nice. <laughs> yeah. Return to Orc Monkey. Yeah. Here's a question. What do you guys think about getting one's uh, way to troll Wuma on social media websites or trying to get them in trouble with their handlers? Actually worthwhile pushback? Um, if you think it's fun, then you, you know go what for I it. Think, it doesn't do you know, anything. You know what I think. It should be fair. Uh, if they're going to come and troll us on Western social media, break their own rules, you know, because the social media is banned and forbidden by their own government in their own country. Yeah. yeah. You know, it should be fair. You should be yeah. able to like... Hey, listen, CCP, why don't you get your, your, your monkey on a leash here? Yeah. You know, it's not supposed to be here, right. you know, cause a little bit of a stir, maybe get a couple of eyes on it, you know, yeah. maybe bring it up with companies like Twitter and YouTube and Facebook. That's why, the most important thing. Why are they allowing state government, state players to come and use their system against the Western people, use our freedom of speech against us? Why are they allowing that? Why? You know, just... Bring up the conversation. Maybe one of these days there'll be a, a situation where, you know, they'll be able to recognize if someone's working for the state as one of these internet trolls that are, you know, Chinese government internet trolls. Maybe they get a designation, you know, yeah. that says so-and-so, government internet troll. The idea is that if you see CCP propaganda, bring it up with a social media website to get them designated as Chinese government yeah. affiliated. Because yeah. that's a law. I mean, there's a yeah. rule with a lot of these things. Twitter and YouTube. They just particular. undersked all the rules. They cut undercut the rules, and that's how they succeed. Re report them yeah. for being that. Yeah. Uh, Subtarshi Sengupta gives us some recommendations of places to go in India. Thank, Thank you. you. Griffin watched Lethal Weapon 2 the other night. Serpents A Day is a well-known South African. What do you think of this Hollywood take on South African baddies? It was baddies? so bad. It was so bad. <laughs> I mean, it's it's kind of laughable. It's it's just Hollywood again. Whenever yeah. they try, they they're pretty bad at portraying other cultures and other you know countries how they go. You know, so when they try to portray like the the racist Afrikaners from South Africa, they really made a bunch of mistakes. It was, it was comedic to me sure. as a South African to watch it. It was like they got so many things wrong, but I had a good laugh at it. I'm not gonna lie. I was like, that was hilarious. Right. Yeah. When I mean, they're trying to be all like serious about it it was like dude this is just ridiculous but yeah not not a very good portrayal grant <laughs> says i know you guys can't go back to china or hong kong or their countries you have to be careful of because of ccp now is foreign citizens it's more it's much worse for chinese citizens that yes. are traveling to mm -hmm. countries that are friendly to ccp yeah. for example uh uh to uh kyrgyzstan mm -hmm. would would deport a chinese citizen if they were a dissident they wouldn't deport us back to china because we're not chinese yeah right now one country that in specific that I would completely avoid now is Cambodia. Mm. Uh, Cambodia is well known to break the laws to to f people up on behalf of the Chinese government. It's sure. basically a vassal state of China now. Mm. JD, thank you. Uh, Chad Malphite, this is for those demonetized videos. Thanks. Yeah, we Keep took a, we blowing. took a hit this week. Both of our yeah, channels. both of both demonetized. It's, it's such an annoyance because when you want to talk about uh, these controversial issues in China. They get demonetized. Yeah, you just there's no way around it. If it's you're life. going to talk about protests, you're going to talk about these things. They get demonetized. It's so frustrating. It's but... it sucks because we don't do it for money, obviously. But you have to pay the bill. So when yeah. we put we spent all week on our videos. Our our yeah. two videos this week, both on Law 86 and Serpents Today, were very labor intensive. Sure, they a lot of research that. done. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And no, no, not a dime like, to be made. So it's it's a way of mainstream media you could say and the influence, the influence yeah. from from the chinese communist party and the way that they attack anything that goes against china as being racist or whatever it's led to a situation where you have a choice you either speak freely about the truth or you self-censor because you want to earn money it's a right. horrible situation yeah they're using capitalism against us really sure so sure. um 
luckily because of the support from people like you who send us super chats and things like that we can afford to take a financial hit every once in a while so thank you to every single one of yeah, you supporters you whether it be on patreon through this through anything you have no idea or even by watching our other videos that are monetized you are the yeah, ones that yeah. are allowing us this luxury of being able to take these hits because this is our full-time job yeah you know this is what we do we make videos so and it makes us not just chase safe content yeah we chase the truth and i will never allow myself to be self-censored me, me neither yeah. cc says all the links to your COVID origin videos are not working anymore can you update them with archive links at some point yes hopefully someone oh, really? can give me a list of them uh, because all of the, the documents that I used when I made my coronavirus origin story are obviously scrubbed by the Chinese internet. Sure. Uh, Shen Lei says, what color would you pick for a color revolution? Probably like a hot pink. I was thinking that's kind of a good it's one. It's a pretty cool yeah, one. Yeah, hot pink. Or... Like a rich hot pink. Mm. Yes, yeah, I'd probably go with something the same, you know, maybe okay. plum, plum crazy purple. I feel like we would have the same color revolution. Yeah. Like we wouldn't have separate revolutions. Yeah, yeah, we stand yeah. for the same things. Exactly. By and large. Uh, Grant... Favorite American dish? Weirdest American dish? I gotta say, pretzel bagels. I'm not gonna lie. Like, that's the best invention in the world. <laughs> I haven't seen you eat those I mean, yeah, quite often these days. So, and pretzel <laughs> croissants. I came across those too. It's nice. basically like a bagel or a croissant, but it's got the outer, like, whatever pretzels have on the outside. That shiny pretzels. shit. Yeah. yeah. I like it. It's so delicious. And like, you know, it just, oh, it's the best thing. Yeah, I don't know. What, what would you find weird as an American dish? You know, it's overly sweet stuff. Americans love, you know, like s'mores and yeah. and donuts and stuff. But there's like some just like, remember we went to KFC and we had <laughs> that's, chicken that's, that's inside of a donut. It was like donut. It was literally donut like sandwich. it was a donut. So it's it's like like you would expect glazed donuts. Two. But there were two of them. So like a disgusting dripping, you know, you squeeze it in oil and, and stuff comes out. One on each side with like a chicken piece of chicken fried, in the middle. Deep fried chicken. Yeah, so it's like a deep fried donuts with a chicken in the middle, and it was like a chicken donut burger. That's the most disgusting <laughs> thing. I still can't even. Like, we, I just, we're still recovering from that. Just the, I feel the like the I never feeling, came back. Y- y- yeah, you know when you have like too much oil or something, and your whole body just like is repulsed. It's gross. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's probably the worst. That's I will hands down agree with you on that <laughs> you know one. What I mean, what the we made a video eating those. Oh my yeah. gosh! Uh, favorite Chinese dishes? I like Dongbei food probably the best. Maybe Xinjiang food to be honest. Mm. Um, yeah, Black Halo Six. Okay, maybe just want I wanted other stuff uh, to be on there, but why not a C one thirty or an F three or any of EP three or any of the ISR aircraft? Why mm. send the second largest aircraft? Oh, he's. Not rebooting, yeah. but yeah. it it's a statement. Yes, it's a statement. It looks, it looks cool. It does. It's it's, that's all it is. Plane. It's the Bishop of China. They should have sent a B two bomber in there. Who knows? Like that would have been special. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> but yeah, no, it, it looks cool. That's at really least cool. it's not a bo- like a bomber would send a very yeah because that's signal. a war plane. It's just yeah, <laughs> it's true. It's, it's a big signal. It's a transport aircraft, yes. but it's military. Yeah, yeah. It was the, I think it was perfect. Yeah. Daredevil, uh, 1985, thank you. Mm-hmm. Cam Mack says, what are taxes like in China? That's a fascinating topic if I ever did hear one. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Are they a lot higher than the U.S.? No. Do a lot of people dodge taxes? Nearly everyone. Yes. How does CCP pay, pay for everything revenue-wise? Um, I mean, they tax the shit out of stuff, but everything at the same Everything you time, buy has got a sales tax on top of it. Don't forget. Yeah. Um, the, you, the tax are so corrupt. Yeah, China. every property that you buy has a huge amount of tax in it. Like, there are a lot of tax things hidden everywhere but yes everyone that i know in china God, cooks the books absolutely in the biggest way even when they were paying me the the various like mm-hmm. legit i have a legit work visa okay i'm working legitimately for a company they would put me down as like the minimum salary that yep. they could same with the university and it's not to help me it's to help the dude company. i work for a government university and yeah. they're doing that so what they do is they give you your paycheck and your bank account yep. which will be like Four thousand RMB, the and right? then yeah. and then they will give you cash for the rest, right. and they actually hand you like wads of cash. Yeah. yeah, and then they don't have to pay tax then on you. And when you go to a restaurant, you have to get a fa piao, which is a tax receipt. A lot of restaurants don't want to give you a tax receipt because then it proves that they've they've had to take a certain amount of money in. So they'll offer you a free drink or something if you don't ask for the tax receipt. You know what a lot of places with this is hilarious, but like let's say a, a university, for example, you'll ask for your, your salary stuff because you got to report to the U.S. taxes. Sure. So I would send that back home. But they would have two different versions. They'd have the one for internal use and it would say like 4,000 RMB per month. Yeah. And then they give you your real one for your American taxes. Yeah. 
so you're not like defrauding the Chinese government. Or sure. But it's it's hilarious. They cook the books even in government branches. Sure, sure. It's yeah, insane. Universities and stuff, yeah. Uh, Fallon Nun, hello from Estonia. Hello to you, our, one of our new favorite countries. Yes. Uh, Super Ghost Fresh, thank you very much. Bjarni Christiansen says, what's up, guys? I lived in Vietnam and some provinces are more communist than others. I found that as well, especially my first drive through. Yeah. Uh, what do you think that, would you think that Vietnam eventually bows to the PLA and CCP? I certainly hope not because, mm. I mean, there's a chance for that to happen, but there's just such a bitter hatred of China. I don't think Vietnam. so. I mean, they fought a war. Yeah. Vietnam hates China, dude. Yeah. Um, yeah, Sex Haver 3000 Bosnia. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Interesting that. name. I'm a sex haver myself. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> when it comes to government organizations spying on you, online privacy and data breaches, isn't the USA as bad, if not worse, than China? What are your opinions? No, Absolutely no, not. Have you guys been watching us? No, I mean. Holy crap. You know that uh, it, it's not hidden in China. No, no. When you install an app like WeChat or whatever, it says. We are taking permission of your microphone, your camera, everything. your contacts, your everything. And if you refuse, you just can't install the bloody app. There are massive problems with data privacy in the U.S., but it's yes. it's there's limitations to what the government can do with it. Yeah. And the thing is, yes, theoretically, the, the, the government maybe could do some things, but you don't see that happen by and large. Oh, and in China, if, it's constantly if used. Anyone, if anyone discovers that the government is spying on them, it blows up. It goes oh, yeah. out and everyone is oh, like, yeah. it'll be Watergate all over again. People are like, oh, my, my privacy, you know, oh, my word, you know, and they go on this big thing. Oh, contrails in the sky, and they've right. implanted radio chips in my head and all this shit. People talk about it, but in China, it's just a given. Yeah. Everyone knows when you're talking yeah. on WeChat that the government's watching. You can't criticize even a, a local cop, or you get blocked into a chair yes. and criticize people on know, national like when TV. We just When we talk to people on WeChat, they're like... Um, yeah, uh, I'll talk to you later on WhatsApp, on WhatsApp or something. About... If you're trying to talk about something, because they know yeah. that they're possibly being watched. So right. it's, a different, it's a different kettle of fish. PP, curious, have you ever had a dream of Xi Jinping in it? Oh, actually, multiple times. <laughs> um, well, you do have his book. I do have his book. I'm a huge fan. No, I'm just joking. <laughs> I just like to know what I'm talking sure, about. Sure, sure. Uh, Craig Prescott, Sasha Baron Cohen is English, lads. Yeah. I know, but he's, uh, he's of Israeli descent. He's a Jew, right? He's Jewish. I don't know. Yeah. I don't know. Uh, he's just good at pretending to be an Israeli. Oh, really? Hmm. I don't know about that. I don't know about that. Look I'm it checking, up. I'm checking that. So, uh, edgy number one says, see Midnight Edge's channel for the Hollywood and the CCP. Okay. I'm finding this out. I know he's, Br obviously he's British. Stop looking this up. Do it Early later. Early life. Jewish parents. Bam. What's up? So, what? I say, they knew he was Jewish. That's good for you. Great. Uh, He's hilarious. <laughs> um, did you see the Borat 2? I didn't see Borat 1. Oh, you didn't see Borat 1. Great movies. Mm. All right. Uh, KW in New York Upstate. Why? You're the only person I've ever met that hasn't seen Borat. I really had a distaste for L.E.G. when I was growing up. Oh, okay. We just, didn't We didn't really watch that here. I just didn't why? like that kind of humor. Oh, what? I don't know. I just didn't like it. Like impersonation? I just didn't like it. Oh, the it's... character that he plays is obnoxious. I don't okay. like to watch. I'm just one of those guys. I'm not big into toilet humor and obnoxious stuff. Gotcha. So for me, it's just like, yeah. I mean, everyone went crazy about it. It's like yeah, Borat. I mean, I thought it was yeah. great. I, um, I mean, I'll probably enjoy it if I watch it. Yeah. Yeah. Probably KW near Gump State. Okay. We'd have to have a chat if you didn't enjoy it. Why does China assault foreigners with anal COVID tests? <laughs> I had to attend a meeting. I couldn't sit down in a chair. <laughs> Seriously, is he making that up? Or must real? be. But yeah, it sucks. Uh, some, you know. Remember, like the American delegates got anal COVID tests when they went to China, and then they said it was a mistake afterwards. <laughs> Chinese go, oh, we didn't mean to do that. I think it's just a deterrent to keep foreigners out of China. To be honest, they've been trying that a lot lately. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> uh, Super Ghost Fresh says, "You ever checked out the commentary that former Australian Prime Minister Kevin Rudd has put out on China? He's fluent in Mandarin and is part of the U.S. Asia Society in New York. I'd like to hear your takes." Um, I have not. I don't think so. Maybe a little. I can't remember. No, that's something to worthy of checking out later. Yeah. yeah. Daredevil, um, Daredevil 1985. The CCP is like Darth Vader. I'm a, I'm altering the deal. Probably don't alter it any further. Do you know how many times Winston and I quote that part of the movie because of China? Yeah. Yeah. That is China. Yep. So many parallels to Darth Vader. It's ridiculous. It's not even funny. Yep. Uh, dog speak. Salty streams on Fridays. <laughs> I don't know who he salty is. Yeah. You have to tell us who, who is salty. It's my... I'm going to get salty. Yeah, it's my pizza from Chuck E. Cheese is yeah. salty, that's for sure. 
Yeah, apparently he has a channel. <laughs> yeah. We'll take, I'm we'll, not being we'll, mean, Don. No, we just I just don't, don't know. know who that yeah, is. We'll take a look. Thanks. We'll look into it. Uh, Lolling Quartz. Thank you. I, I sound like a dick. I'm not being a dick. Yeah, I just yeah. don't know who that is. Yeah. Uh, with 10,000 Korean won, I support your research. Uh, sadly, journalism more and more skips non-profitable stories. Yeah. That's absolutely that's unfortunate. For an, I mean, that's why you don't see a whole lot of the student protest thing that I just covered today. Mm. Not a whole lot of coverage about no. that, is there? How about all these kindergarten How stabbings stabbing? and stuff? Not you a whole lot of coverage, is no, there? No, but yeah, have one school shooting in America, the whole world talks about it for years. Yeah. You know, but like killing 37 kids or whatever in a kindergarten and when? Mm, nothing. Like three times a week. Yeah. It's just, it's Foreign terrible. influence. Winston, I just watched uh, Searching for Sugar Man recently. Was Sixo Rodriguez really that big in South Africa in the 90s? Pretty big, yeah. Okay. Hubert Salvador says, keep fighting the good fight, gents. Okay, thank you. Will do. Sorry about this. Yeah, there's some interesting things I could talk about South Africa at some point. You know, it's, yeah. Yeah, there are some interesting things about the that country. A lot of terrible junk too, but you know, like there's a certain charm. Owen Video says, you guys should do a, go on a storm chase in Texas. That sounds so fun, but also I value yeah. my life. We have our truck. The truck that we have for we Rufus have Whips is the same truck from Twister. Twister. We have the exact same truck It's the exact Twister. same one. I'm not same, joking. Same color, everything. It's a red V10 Dodge Ram. Yes, it is. It is from Twister. 2500 so, with extended cab. I guess if you it's want us to the, go on this. The Twister truck, all we need is that Dorothy contraption to mm -hmm. put on the back. We just need to get one. Yeah. Should be easy to track down on eBay. Yeah, uh, you can Matthew. actually. There are people that make replicas yeah, of them. I want the real thing. <laughs> uh, Matthew Hawkins you should do a video on China's demographic crisis uh, I started working on one and then this protest thing happened mm. I think the ec economic stagnation from the crisis will lead to massive social instability and unrest in the 2030s actually I talked about this hugely in my will Ch or China is about to attack video yeah or no will China yeah, attack, will China attack yeah. Yeah. Taiwan uh, I believe this will be a bigger test for the CCP than 1989 and I would agree with you sure Journey and destination, $5 more than what your opinion is worth. But I figured if you're willing to alienate all your friends in China for money, then you must be desperate. Okay, thank you. What a, what a <laughs> dick. <laughs> it's a, oh, it's it's a new tactic that they're trying to yeah. do. Um, it's very interesting to see all the wait, different... Wait, does he just assume that all my friends are not my friends anymore? Yeah. That's hilarious. Yeah, exactly. Who do you think feeds me all this information? <laughs> yeah, you moron. I love it, though, because the Wu Mao's, it comes in waves. They mm. think of, like, first they'll try to insult you mm. into silence, then they'll try to shame you into silence, then they'll try to make you feel guilty into silence. They try all these weird things. So this is kind of the new flavor of the week. Yeah, yeah, yeah it is. Well, thanks for wasting your money on us. Appreciate it. Gordon uh, Bennington, have you all tried KC Barbecue? What's Kansas City. Yes, I, we've both been to Kansas City. Um, hey, wait, have you been to Kansas City? Where is Kansas? In, In Kansas. Missouri, oh. weirdly enough. <laughs> Mm, no, but no. I in St. Louis, Missouri, that's, that's I had a, that's similar. I had incredibly good barbecue. I, I would say St. Louis was the best barbecue it's in the world. It's just I was like, whoa! And I flew my drone over that arch or whatever, yeah. and it was very hairy. And yeah. then I found out I probably shouldn't have done that. It's a hairy city as well. I gotta admit. <laughs> anyway, that's <laughs> pretty continue. dangerous place. Yeah. Uh, Vile nine nine nine. Thank you, Black Halo. Oh, shields dropping paychecks again. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, love thanks, it. thanks for wasting your money on us. We'll put it towards the propaganda effort, um, the anti-propaganda effort for China. Love it. <laughs> and we're not going to give the propaganda effort money, are we? No, I just misspoke no, no. there. Santi, uh, YouTube being demonetized makes me feel less guilty about using Adblock. Mm. Um, PSA, well, that's a terrible logic. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for the donation. Yes, yes. PSA, you two are journalists and good ones of that. Don't undersell yourselves. Thank you. Appreciate oh. that. Modesty is a good characteristic, mm -hmm. isn't it? I don't think we're journalists. Yeah. But I, I do think what we do is important. Yeah. Janice G, thank you. Uh, Neon Noir, yay. Yo, two-hour stream. Well, we're way over yeah. time. Yeah, this is the first time we've done it Friday, so this this time we are going over, and we're not going to leave any of your questions unanswered. So. No. And we're, we're almost done anyway. So. Bo, Bo Hoyt, very generous. Thank Incredibly you. Our generous. first big dog here. For the you those demonetized videos and to piss off the Wumaz in West Taiwan, please thank, keep up. The thank, you so much. thank you so much. Uh, Vile999, what do you think of the Hungarian government naming streets to piss off the CCP? Brilliant. Well, they need, so for the, you, guys, you guys that don't know, there's a uh, Fudan University is going into uh, a branch into Hungary, a Budapest. This is the same university that has professors murdering people inside yeah. of it, by the way, just so you know. Right. It's a branch of the Murder University. The Murder University has mm. started a branch in Budapest. And the mayor of the Budapest was really mad and not a fan of the CCP. So he had all the streets named like Free like Hong Dalai Kong, Lama Dalai Street, Lama Street. Yeah. And Uyghur Marta Street. Uyghur Marta Street. It's actually official. So if you go on Google and look at the streets around the Fudan University yeah. proposal, 
they're all actually officially named that now. It's so brilliant. all the Chinese international students will go there and be like, shucks, shucks, mm. or question it, you know. Um, <clears throat> Tara Doherty, cheers to 3,500 viewers. Thank actually, you. we we hit 4,100 oh, something peak viewers. Point? This is That's our incredible. biggest one yet. So Friday was a good, thanks for the tip, guys. Yeah. Uh, Canada Gin 3, she's a YouTuber, right? Yeah. She's got a Uyghur, free Uyghur East Turkestan thumbnail. Yeah, yeah. I approve. Very, very uh, familiar with her work from many years ago. Long time fan, first time donating. I want to spread the good tip for all. Etsy is a good site for buying non CCP occupied China main goods, mm -hmm. supporting small business. You can filter results by country, lots of unique items. That's cool. Yeah, Hontoni Arigo to Gozaimashita. Yeah, she lives in Japan, right? Yeah. That's right. One of the OG J vloggers. Right. Mm. Uh, Bob XRP says, what's the best spot city in Taiwan? Uh, I would say Taipei is hands down the best city. Mm -hmm. um, there's a lot of cool spots, though. I'd say Huanshan is really cool. Kanding yep. is cool. Mm -hmm. Taichung is vibey if you want like a younger aesthetic. Yeah, yeah. Um, Hualien, if you want to see the beautiful East Coast. Hualien, yeah, as you well, say. As oh, say. Taiwan's just amazing. Like, the, if you do go to Taiwan, even if you're just on a holiday, Rent yourself a scooter or a bike and just go around the whole island. It's beautiful. You'll see so many good spots. But anywhere that there's a good night market is where I say you should be. Yeah. Mm. Um, <clears throat> he says, when is the bridge from China to Thailand going to be finished? I have no idea. Yeah. Uh, Muramasa Ninja says, at what point will the loss of face over Taiwan outweigh the consequences of war for the CCP? Probably never, to be honest. Yeah. It's too much, too much to be lost. Yes. Uh, Wadali for Sun. Uh, you can check out Kerry Gershenak in the Asian Society and Serpents a Day. You need a PPL. What's that? I have no idea. No What's idea. a PPL? No idea. Someone will tell us. PP sure. large? I don't know what a PPL <laughs> is. <laughs> Carl Sinkoi, have you considered setting up a membership system in YouTube? Say five pounds a month for a little ADV emojis in chat to support the show. Actually, YouTube was bugging me to set that, that up. I just haven't finished it yet. Thank you definitely for the have, Yeah, thank, thank you. you. I'll, I'll do it for next week because mm -hmm. then people can have our little emojis. That's awesome. You know? Yeah, get a milk dog in there. Get yeah. a little milk dog. Mm -hmm. little cotton. She need a poo, a little cotton. Yeah. Uh, Han W, listening to the podcast while taking my Saturday morning drive. I hope you're enjoying the MX-5. Uh, nice start to the weekend. Good fight. Keep up the good fight, guys. Mm, nice. Does he have a manual? He does have a manual. Very cool. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Sore Wall. What are your views on NTD Media following Dafa back to anti CCP news group? I mean, consume what you want to consume. Yeah. We're not affiliated, well, but whatever. PBL, private pilot's license. Oh, and yeah. Yes, actually, we're looking into that. <laughs> I, I, I've been looking into that quite seriously yeah. for a while. It's just such a, it's, it's an expensive thing to get into. I mean, yeah. we're not rich. Yeah. You're going to have to buy a plane probably or rent one or something. Yeah. But yeah, it's, it's something I'd love to do. I'd yeah. love to do. So yeah. hopefully we can. Hopefully Guys, wow. We've reached the end of the questions. Sorry for taking this um, long. It's been a long one today. Thank you so much for joining us. Remember, you're part of an incredibly important conversation here. We cannot stress to you how much we need your support just watching this because the things that we, the insights we have into China and the, the things that we share with all of you, these are very important talking points yeah. that affect the entire world. Yeah. But there's just not enough attention on these things. Everyone's caught up in, Whatever. oh, what did America do here? What did America do mm -hmm. there? Or something else. And they lose track of what's actually really affecting our lives. So thank you for being a part of this conversation. We couldn't do it without you. And thanks to the people that are supporting us. On oh, yeah. On uh, patreon.com slash ADV podcast. Yeah. Post there. So it doesn't actually every day we answer the messages you guys send. Yeah. So thank you for your support. Thank you so much for your support, guys. We can't wait to see you in the next one. And uh, next week it'll be back to the usual shtick. You'll get another Lao 86, uh, another Serpent Today, and ADV China. And uh, of course, another podcast. Mm -hmm. So can't wait to see you there. 